guys in the chat. <clears throat> What's up? Hope you guys are well. Ah, uh, sorry. Quick intro here today. I just am kind of jonesing for some games. And we're casting some StarCraft 2 today, so figured we'd get that going ASAP. Sorry, all my icons on my desktop suddenly have a little cloud next to them. I'm like, what is this? OneDrive has synced all my files? What the fuck? Uh, uh, uh. So, um... Yep, we're going to be casting StarCraft 2 uh, in 25 minutes. Going to play a quick game or two of StarCraft Toxigen 1 first. Cheered. X300 Artosis. Toxigen. I'm so tired. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Every week I'm combing through the thesaurus, trying to find some new way of making a D's nuts joke. Yeah. I'm taking a break so I can discover myself again. I understand. You've done a, a good job, though, uh, Toxigen. You're going to discover these nuts in your mouth. I will never trust you again. <clears throat> quite enough sleep last night i did take a very short power nap today i've been working really hard all day so i actually have like a little headache whether that is from tiredness or caffeine because i've had so much caffeine today i'm what? not sure toxic that's why we have no lights on today x300 oh i forgot something toxigen strikes again <clears throat> okay. Now I was surprised you missed your little tagline there, man. People in the chat had you backed up. Three days closet challenge? What is that? Biggest fan donated three dollars. RT underscore. Yep. Please be sure to check the PO box often, as I will be mailing myself to the address. <laughs> I have only packed three days of food, and the estimated <clears throat> journey will be seven days shipping. I will have to stretch my food in order to make the journey. Yeah, if you pop out of the box when my wife picks it up, it's going to be a problem. I think my wife goes to mail, goes and picks up mail like once a week or so. <clears throat> so if you're lucky, you live. Yesterday was Thanksgiving, not today. We did Thanksgiving. Today I had some, uh, <clears throat> my mother-in-law made soup out of the leftovers. Oh my God, it was the best soup I've ever had. It was fucking delicious. I just ate so much soup. You don't normally get full off soup, but I ate so much fucking soup, I'm full. Thank you. 
Noobs, please be cheered. X300, why is cheering buggy arty underscore? Personal computer? Personal computer? Personal What's computer? Wrong with it? Personal computer? 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 Is he literally just walking over everything? Personal computer, personal computer, personal computer, 
Personal computer. Personal computer. This guy just walked personal over computer, like 20 mines. Personal computer. Personal there we go. Computer, Finally one fucking personal computer. One mine personal hits computer, and he fucking loses everything. Personal computer. 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 Smartest guy in chat donated three dollars and thirty-three cents. You could float a factory to his island third and make vultures to harass his mineral line. You are in the right spot for it. What? Drungry cheers. X300 computer personal. Computer computer personal. 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 Computer persona personal. Computer personal. Computer personal. Starcraft question donated three dollars and thirty three cents. Why does Terran behave map key main cover key act poor or are you alien unicop cow manifestations? Some men did need like you now sap no six sieve binic shall we nigh jar the far away deck of our but a our harna jar macalaka papal are only a cacamana by back at a far they can fargat our way the caxa dagger jar and or a cacamana by ocop. Noobs, please cheer. X three hundred H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H a H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H 
A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A Dude, what the fuck? Shut up. LV eighty wow image cheered. X one thousand RT Starcraft guy. Hope you had a good day. My day was good. Got some good rest today and loads of stuff done today. I am looking forward to ESL tonight and hoping for some good games and a mixed bag of quick and long games, especially in the final round in the best of five. I hope Ladder is going good so far for you. Good luck. Let's see all the doubters cry today. This makes a new cheer batch for me. 2 plus 2 equals 2. 22 plus 22 equals 22. 4 plus 4 equals 4. 44 plus 44 equals 44. 6 plus 6 equals 6. 66 plus 66 equals 66. Trying something new, hope it works. Always. Drungry cheered. X 300 H A B C D E F G H A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z question mark H A B C D E F G You have to be kidding me. Why did that go there? B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z question mark H A B C D E F G H A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z question mark H A B C D E F G H A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z question mark H A B C Bait question donated three dollars and thirty three cents. What is your opinion on the Israel Palestine conflict? Yeah, this is not a political stream. I don't Jack watch Frost fan club donated three dollars. The cremaster <coughs> muscles are responsible for retracting and extending the testicles. While these are involuntary muscles, they can be trained to be activated voluntarily. As such, one might be able to actually put one's balls up. Non-oops, please, he cheered. X300, this game is so lost like the donos today. S poop, 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 po
poop, 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 I don't like this map TBT. I have a very hard time here. Poop, 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 Pancakes underscore enjoy a shield. X three hundred. Bear, country two, frog. Kumaludo nated three dollars and thirty three cents. Bear, frog, 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 bear. Frog, bear, 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 bear, frog, 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 bear. Frog, bear, 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 no noobs, please he cheered. X three hundred. DRG and WLFDRCHM cheered. X three hundred. You will underscore. You woo underscore, 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 you woo underscore. You woo underscore. You woo underscore. 
you woo underscore, 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 you woo underscore. Ah, that's unfortunate. I would have liked to finish that. You woo underscore, you woo underscore, you woo underscore. Several questions for you donated $3.33. If a rainbow could taste like a song, what flavor would purple be? Can a square circle dance better than a talking potato? How many feathers does it take to fill an empty swimming pool with light? Can the color 7 to hear the sound of chocolate? Arty? What? Into the Mad Cowboy donated $3.33. Hello leader of the American Federation. One day when I get better, we will do another BO3 smile. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mad Cow. Thank you much, man. Yeah, I, I, I would find that pleasurable. That sounds weird, but um, yeah. Always down for some practice games. Oh. D4 T4 one cheered. X300, this is a Dono meta from the future. You won't understand why this is funny, sorry. Burgundy is one of France's main wine producing areas. It is well known for both its red and white wines, <laughs> mostly made from Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grapes, respectively, mm -hmm. although other grape varieties can be found, including Gomet, Aligote, Pinot Blanc, <laughs> and Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. Are you a fan of wines from Burgundy? Burgundy's nuts. Burgundy's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch. Gumiho uh, up here at the top. We got Pig, Gerald. Mm -mm -mm. Trigger. All right. Trigger's back. Clem. So this top bracket looking like a Gumi Gerald or Gumi Trigger bracket. Clem here. He's been winning a lot of cups lately. Nina, Mixu, uh, Bjorn, Solar. All right. That's Solar. Yeah. Uh, we got Fork, Vindicta, nice. Kletaby, mm-hmm. We got Hero down here, Wayne. We got Disrespect, we got Dark, okay. Special didn't sign up. What is this fucking camera shot? Fix that right up there. Okay, so what are we looking at for first round? First round's always so hard, man. So hard to find something good for first round. What? Obscure reference donated $3.33. I don't know if you remember this, but remember that time, lol, when you, lol, built one pile on lol, and when it died you lost the game, lol? Yes, what? I remember very well. Less SC2. More circumflex donated three dollars. Chat spam not as if you circumflex. Because I circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. RT do you circumflex? Because I circumflex. Oh. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. Oh. You circumflex. I circumflex. You <clears throat> circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. You circumflex. I circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex, you circumflex. You circumflex, I circumflex. Thank you, thank you. Yes, guys, I understand. Gary Oak leading the StarCraft II resistance in the chat. Uh, we're going to start out with, uh, I think, Riser versus... Um, 
disrespect. It's a round of 32 match. It looks like the matches start to get pretty good in round of 16. So we're going to, we're going to, there will probably be like one eh match to start. That's always the case on the ESL Cups. It's pretty rare we get a good first match. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary Oak. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, wait, I had something. Okay, we're going to get into that match. Let me just run to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Tenji, a pause. BRB. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Definitely really had to go. Um. Okay, we're going to be starting this first match here in just one moment, guys. Well, of course, uh, how many rooms in my house? A lot. Six rooms. Um, we're going to start off with, uh, yeah, Riser Disrespect. Again, around a 32. 
uh, match here. We're going to have, of course, as always, Mapu observing. So do enjoy that. <laughs> Did you find a C2 in the toilet, RT? <laughs> oh, shit. That's so funny. That is funny. All right, we're getting the first match. This is a this is a pretty close MMR match actually. So this is going to be one of our better uh, one of our better ones, I think, for the first round that we're showing. Uh, so, yeah, it's like 5.6k Terran against 5.8k Protoss. So that's like very, very close. You know, within 200 MMR of each other. Uh, on StarCraft 2 ladder, that's a lot closer than on StarCraft 1 ladder. Um, I think that might be just slightly loud. ST4 and Kai Hanglo cheer. X300. What's up, Stanky? I don't remember Dune 2 looking this sharp. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was looking. Uh, I actually, I don't know if that's you in the Discord. I assume it is. I assume there's not another guy that names himself ST4 and Kai in the in the Discord. But anyways, I was looking to download it today. Uh, the downloads were all broken, but I found a web browser-based version. So we are good to go. I think we'll be playing Dune 2 this week. I'm actually kind of excited actually kind of excited for it so we'll be giving that a try later this week okay <clears throat> anyways let's see what we got here we got disrespect in the bottom left in the top right uh we have riser uh again two strong na players um yeah disrespect we've actually casted uh, a fair amount uh in the past and yeah he's pretty good and he's still up and coming i think um riser we've done a little tiny bit of Mm, definitely heard of him a little bit more than disrespect as well. <laughs> the quiz at Hatterash. Yeah, for sure you know that. Um, yeah, I, I love Dune. Read all the books. It's great. Actually, I haven't read the prequels yet, but I did buy the prequels, so maybe I'll read those at some point. Anyways, uh, yeah, we're on uh, Radhuset Station. So we have seen this map uh, previously. This is the one with that third base that's kind of pocketed behind that looks... Really hard to attack, so a very defensive map. And it's like forever ST4 from base to base. What's up, Stanky? X300. Yeah, that's me. I responded. You can emulate it in a browser. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, I haven't really used Discord much, but I got an email notification that you tagged me and I logged into the Artosis Discord and immediately I was like, wow. This must be where all the hottest girls on the internet hang out. Yeah, yeah, but be careful because Celia is a mod in there. Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah, we'll be we'll be playing uh, Dune too. I'm actually, yeah. Thank you for the uh, constant harassment about it. We'll we'll get to that this week. Anyways, uh, taking a look, guys. By the way, before this uh, cast really gets going, I do want to mention. That, <laughs> that uh, there is a new YouTube channel, Artosis Casts 2, for StarCraft 2 videos. So if you are someone that likes uh, StarCraft 2, that's where the uh, StarCraft 2 casts are going to go. Uh, just kind of its own spot. Mapu's running that channel. And uh, yeah, we're going to be uploading all the casts from this and other various things that I end up casting uh, on that channel. So, and yeah, of course, Artosis Casts is just StarCraft 1. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know that one. I've been doing that one for years. So, anyways, anyways, it is an Oracle opener here. Uh, he's throwing out a shield battery. has the double adept here as well. And it looks like Disrespect is going to try to just run by. Yeah, throws down a single grenade. Uh, the shade was pretty quick. He is going to get a few probes at least. So, gets two already. And it looks like that's going to be it. So, only a couple of probe kills. Uh, maybe not executed quite as well as he would have liked. So a little bit painful there. Oracle going across the map. Oh my God, it's a flea beacon. Dude, tell me it's a mothership rush. Tell me it's a mothership rush. Honestly, I could see it being uh, a Tempest as well. 
Like, Tempest from back there, though, doesn't make as much sense to me. Really hoping that we end up seeing a mothership here. That would be... That would be amazing to see a mothership rush. You know, uh, the patch has come out recently, and uh, the mothership has been changed dramatically. It costs way less than before. Its stats are very, very different. Not mana-based anymore. All energy-based. Oh, it is going to be a Tempest. Okay, so Tempests have also changed in the patch, uh, in case you weren't aware. And they are going to be a little bit faster now and look a little bit smaller as well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it for Tempest. So that's kind of interesting. One thing to mention about the Tempest. Okay, and I, I want to talk about why I think the Tempest is a good unit for this map in a second. But um, the uh, Cyclone was so heavily changed, it doesn't really counter Tempest anymore. Uh, Tempests are very good against those. So, like, you're going to have to basically... Oh, my God, he's going Mothership and Tempest. I love him. Riser is my new favorite player. Goodbye, Trigger. Hello, Riser, my new favorite Protoss from North America. Okay, so this is super, super cool. I can't wait for this. You can see that this thing is speedy, speedy fast right now. Uh, it turns and excels better than it used to. Uh, Mothership as well turns really, really well now at this point. And it looks like he wants to harass there. So the setup here is kind of like King Sejong Station, if you guys remember uh, that map. It was a very popular map for a while, but this is like a modified version, how the natural is set up, which is a great place for a Tempest to go in and harass some. Now, I don't believe that there's any Vikings out. So there's literally not going to be anything that can really scratch this. Uh, so this is a, a mega cool idea. Throws down the tag. Oh, there is one Viking, but a Tempest wrecks a Viking. There's no issue there. Now there's the Cyclone, and you're gonna see that the Cyclone has a hard time locking on. It's lock on range is like, lock on range I think is seven. And it can fire at nine. So that's like really hard to hit. What's up? Nice. What kind of beaver do you prefer? I want to get the best. Wish you did more SC2 stuff. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, I'm still, I'm still doing it weekly at least. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that you got that book. It's fantastic. I'm on book number two. I ordered ordered book number three. It's it's a great series. I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a bidet yet. I, I did promise myself I'd buy one. So this year I'm going to get one, hopefully, by the end of the year. Anyways, uh, onwards. <laughs> uh, a little recall there. Now, this is really cool. So he's got the mothership. He's got multiple Tempests. And if you look at this base layout, you can't really attack him. He can kind of just go for this. He's going into carriers, more Tempest. Like, this is really cool. And you see with the tags, he's able to just target down what he wants with these Tempests right now. Now, the Mothership doesn't permanently cloak. That's an ability that it can use every 50 seconds for a duration of 20 seconds. It's really weird. Uh, no Regret and I talked about that and made a YouTube video about it. Uh, but, like, I think that that is a bit of a mistake. They should have just let it have its permanent cloaking field. It'd be a, such an interesting unit at that point. But still, I think it's 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 very interesting at the moment. So, anyways, this is directly into Sky Toss. He is not caring at all about gateway units. I think he still has just two adepts. For this map, this is such a good idea. This is such a good idea by Riser. And here's the thing. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really watch any StarCraft 2 this week. So, maybe someone else came up with this this week. Because the patch is, like, literally a, a week and, like, eight hours old, right? So it's still a relatively new patch. So I didn't see if someone else came up with this. But, like, for a map like this where you basically have three bases with one choke point, this is such a brilliant idea that you can go directly into Sky Toss. Uh, you see he's getting Robos as well as the uh, Support Bay. That's going to be for Disruptors to make sure that he doesn't just die to like Marines, let's say, right? Uh, and then it's like, well, you have to go Vikings from there, but the Vikings kind of get, you know, railed back by uh, by the Tempest. And if you want to commit in to hit the Tempest, then the carriers are going to be able to put out their DPS. So that's that's tough. Like that's, that's a tough unit comp to deal with when you start getting up to the actual mass that you want. So yeah, this is this is really exciting stuff from Riser. I'm I'm totally digging this build right now. I can't believe that we're actually seeing like a mothership uh a mothership rush. So plus one is almost done. I'm sure we'll get into plus two very quickly. That fourth base being taken. Look at this. This is the funny thing about Red Who Set Station. Uh, and again, this is something that I talked about in last week's cast as well. Um, 
you know, it, you have that three base and it's one defensive spot. You take the fourth base, it's still one defensive spot and very hard to get in there. So, like, excellent defensive areas on this map. So easy to get gigantic. Uh, there is that one medevac waiting to go in, but that's not really that scary. Uh, maybe if he can line that up with a frontal push, he can, like, draw attention away. Maybe get some probes in the main base. You know, maybe pick off a, a reasonable building, a cybernetic score for plus two or something. I don't know. It's... It, but, like, one medevac is not the scariest thing in the world here. Well, that is that is a pylon that's kind of all by itself. You do want to watch out for those. And picks off the uh, medevac immediately. You can see very quickly uh, dealing a lot of damage right there. Kind of annoying here uh, to try to kill this with warpin since you have, like, one gate. <laughs> kind of a funny and cute thing. Uh, he does have double cyber core, but hasn't hasn't actually done anything with it. Uh, might be time to throw a couple cannons down in those mineral lines as well. You can see he's got a few in these other mineral lines just to be safe. I like that building skin a lot, by the way, uh, for those photon cannons. Those look really cool. Uh, so, yeah, more and more carriers are popping out. Some immortals joining the fray. That is not something I expected. This may be him countering Thors before Thors even appear. We also have Blink on the way. He is getting plus one ground attack. Uh, that's interesting as well. Okay, he does have four gates, actually, so my bad. But adding in a few gateway units here. Like, if you trade Air Army for Air Army, I could see re remassing gateway units and that being pretty good. But in this, exactly, like having four stalkers underneath those is not that helpful. I guess if you get like a nice, a nice size group, you know, 10, 12 stalkers. Maybe you can pick off a lot of these Vikings. Uh, okay, so we have some upgrades coming right now for uh, the Void Rays. Going to get that Void Ray speed going. Plus two, almost done. More and more carriers, more gates on the way. I mean, if you're going to get the, the, this many gates, I feel like you may as well grab a second forge and just pump out those upgrades because before they get like 2-2 two, two minimum, they're going to be kind of garbage. Plasma shields get started. Makes a lot of sense when you're going for a sky toss. All right, down he comes. And oh my. Okay, so the disruptor actually goes out, gets a really reasonable hit, throws down... Uh, the time warp here. The carrier's putting some sick damage out there. The Marauder's dealing a lot of damage to everything underneath, but you can see the Sky Toss army does definitely end up winning that. Uh, he loses the Mothership, but has basically all of his carriers left, plus a couple Tempests, plus a single Immortal underneath. So definitely this, uh, <laughs> this army is doing its job right now. Brings up a Prism. Can definitely remake a lot there too. Now, uh, we have two starports, so we do have four Vikings being made at a time. 2-2 two, two is about to finish. There's no splash damage here, so this is actually something you can overwhelm with bio. Uh, this might be a little bit of a mistake to com commit this hard, but he killed so much, I guess there's not quite enough production left. And GG, that's going to be game one. And that was... That was sick. That was... I loved seeing the new strat. I love seeing the quick Tempest Rush. I love seeing... Uh, the Mothership play, the very fast Mothership play, seemed like a great strategy for that map, really. Because it's not just a new patch, it's a new map pool as well. Oh, okay. Why did you leave out the C in Artosis Cast as C2? Because it's just Artosis Cast 2. Might change the name of it later. Right now, that's the name of it. Um, but, yeah, it, it, there might be more stuff. Because, like, for instance, uh, I've I've said several times, I actually think StarCraft 2 is going to die when uh, Frost Giants game comes out, Stormgate. Uh, at that point, maybe I'll cast Stormgate and put that on the channel instead. I don't know. We'll see. All right, we're going to the next game. And it's going to be on Site Delta. 
We have in the bottom right, Disrespect. In the top left, we have Riser. And let's see, let's see uh, if there's anything special up Riser's uh, sleeve this game. Would love to see something uh, nifty like that. But the base layout here is a lot harder to defend. Whatever third base you take is pretty separated from the natural expansion. So I don't assume that we're going to see a build like we saw last game. If he has something like that, I'd be really interested in it. But without the kind of free third base, doesn't seem like a good idea. So double gas going down here for disrespect. He's going to be going for a factory opening. And we'll see what type of factory opening this is going to be. Is it going to be a more aggressive opening? Is it going to be something just like, you know, uh, some some Reaper Hellion for a little bit of pressure? It could be something like that. Hard to say right now. Probe coming in, checking that out. Realizes, okay. We see basically what's going on. You know, I think aggression on a map like this is uh, going to be much, much weaker. It's fine to open with a factory, but, like, I think it should be expansion right after factory. You know, when you have a ramped natural, uh, it just makes attacking so much harder. You're never going to get the first volley. Uh, you know, they can have all sorts of sim cities up there that can mess you up. It's really hard to pre-scout exactly what the position of the army is, so you don't know. And, you know, again, that first volley makes all the difference in StarCraft, so... Uh, yeah, I, I do want to see after this factory a command center going down pretty quickly here. And I, I think we will. I think we will. Reaper comes down, kind of scouts around a little bit. We'll see if Disrespect is going to be going for that command center. Yeah, I just saw something pop down in the natural, so that should be an SCV. And there it is. Going to go ahead, take that command center. Terran music is legit. Starcraft 1 or Starcraft 2. This is like legit good music. Kind of makes me nostalgic, honestly. Listening to Starcraft 2 music. I used to play this game all the time. Alright, so... Ooh, that adept actually doing some serious work there. You can't be... Ah, he loses both. He loses both. He will end up losing the adept. I mean, you look at it co cost-wise, it's not that different, but the two reapers are better right now than the adept. Uh, but that is some hard micro to pull off. So a cyclone on the way. Very interested to see if he wants to make more than a cyclone. Like, maybe multiple cyclones i don't think he will i think he's going to grab an add-on maybe just one cyclone for some defensive purposes runs up hey that's a good scout that's a high quality scout right there seeing a robo now you see the robo and it's being chrono boosted so that's looking at this like if you see three gates in a robo a lot of times you're gonna be like oh it's gonna be a blink build but the timing of that is off the timing of everything is a little bit off here so i think you can read this it's a hard read maybe but I think you can read this and say there's no Twilight if you're if you're on top of, of what you're looking at. We'll see how he sets up, right? He might set up uh, anti blink in defense where, you know, you have a... Well, I mean, you're going to want to bunker almost either way, but um, sometimes you see, like, the seed shank behind buildings in the main base, that type of thing. So Warpin coming in right now. This is a funny looking little army. Look at that Cyclone waiting. That's waiting for a flank on a Prism 100%. Let's see if he gets it. <laughs> He's going for it. And he turns to actually attack all this. 
Uh, ooh, uh, 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 uh. Oh, that's a great lock on right there. Oh my God, and the save. What a sick save there from Riser. Uh, but it looks like he will end up holding. Loses six SCVs. So disrespects economy definitely hurting. Nice catch there on the observer. Oh, dude. Oh, target, 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 target. Ooh, just barely. Yeah, like he had some some ripe targets right there. A nice siege up, and I think you are gonna have to pull back. The attack not that successful, um, but does kill some of those SCVs. Now, I believe from this position, this is not as bad for disrespect as it looks. Okay, because like this is very delayed blink, very delayed splash damage from Riser. And his army's not gonna scale as much, right? So if you have these, if you add extra gateways early and you're relying on micromanagement to kind of get an advantage, a slightly slowed attack from Terran to counterattack as they get stim and combat shields is gonna do very well against that. You're not gonna be able to do much with your very early units because Protoss is gonna be able to kind of out control you like we just saw there. Uh, but when Disrespect is ready to move out, uh, I feel like he should have a much better army in like the next one minute or so, let's say. We'll see if he's actually going to go ahead and do that. But uh, that's that's kind of my gut feeling on that. The scan goes down. He sees, okay, third base. I think you got to be thinking about uh, moving out, you know, get a couple medevacs out. Uh, you know, you have three, three, four tanks at that point. Good bio force, plus one, combat shields, stim, right? That's that's a very good, very high quality army at that point. So Riser right now adding in a lot of stalkers. More immortals still being fielded as well. Really cool to see the added utility of the immortal with the, the new slight buff that it got. The slight buff being uh, whatever sets off its shield, it actually blocks that damage as part of the shield. Um, before it would like, let's say a tank hit it, right? It would take that damage and then put up its shield. And it was just like the dumbest interaction. They took off the, the, the choice to manually trigger it, which was really high skill and really good and made it into that kind of like watered down crappy version of the immortal, but it's a lot better now. Uh, not as good as it originally was, I think, or no, you could argue. It, you could argue maybe even that it's better than it originally was. But I think the original way for it had really, really high skill ceiling, which, of course, we don't want Protoss players to have to put up with. Now, uh, we have Marines and tanks moving out. He does have double medevac, so this is almost kind of a fake to keep his opponent busy. So pushing him back, the Prism comes in and is going to do a little bit of a warping in that main base. The two dropships, the two the two medevacs are taking a really long time to go across the map. Unfortunately, they kind of took the long way around. They're mostly dodging vision. They might run into this one pylon or just barely not. That's really good vision capturing from Mapu uh, to show us that he just barely wasn't seen. So this is going to be a bit of a surprise. Uh, and it looks like he's just below energy for a recall. So this is, this is like optimal. Look at this. He's going to kill this. Oh my God. That, that pylon going down three gates and a robo. Finally gets the energy there for the recall. Uh, it, you know, it was still relatively quick. And he is going to pick up and just decide to get out of here against three immortals. Definitely the right choice. But does some damage there. He's up in that worker count. Some good moves. Some good moves. It looks like he picked off the prison maybe when it was warped back there. I kind of lost track of what that was. Mm. So Storm coming up. A couple Archons mixed in. Disrespect with his three bases. I tell you, this is one of the better first series that we've had in the ESL Open Cups. Very, very solid first round match. It's a little drop off here. The Stalker's going to come down, put some pressure onto those medevacs. Pick one off immediately and blink back. A couple Warpins from Zealots here. More coming up from that natural. And he's going to get out. Uh, but in the meantime, hitting this third base location, look at this, 10 probes going down, whittling down the Zalts as they walk in, draws them back into those sea chanks. I think he's going to get the Nexus as well. Yeah, Disrespect has put out a very high quality game, but actually he's not going to be able to kill that Nexus. And in fact, he's going to end up losing this army. There's just a bit too much firepower and down goes everything. Uh, does get away with like one medevac of units. 
game the game pretty close right now like the economy of riser is pretty badly hurt but the army quality of riser i think is like just slightly higher with the amount of memorial that he has All right, looks like Riser is setting up for an attack. He's got Archons, he's got Charge Lots, he's got Immortals in here. Gonna bust that bunker in a matter of seconds. That's a good size for him. Very nicely done. Bust the bunker. Can he actually bust through the whole army? That is another question. The Immortals getting on top of everything is an issue. The Archon actually doing a great job tanking ridiculous amounts of damage. Great juggle back as well. A nice save for Immortals in this army right now. GG and Riser is going to take down Disrespect 2 to 0. That second game, really, really good one. Uh, the first one was good because it was interesting with the different strategy, the different build than we're used to seeing. But uh, yeah, the second one, just a good competitive game there. All right, so that was a good first round. Ugh. All right, we're going to we're going to find our next match and get that going pretty quick. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm just I'm like looking at the bracket, seeing where we're at, seeing what we can get for matches. Artie will hate Stormgate the minute he finds out about hero units. Did they announce something? Heroes do not gain experience, nor are they able to carry items, nor are they in one versus one mode. So who the fuck cares? Could you please explain that to me? Who cares? Oh, Artosis, you're not going to like the game when you find out the modes that you never play have units that you don't like. I'm like, wow. Guess what? There's units I don't like in Warcraft 3 as well, and guess what I do? I just don't play it. Wow. Isn't that wild? <laughs> A hero is a game mechanic which makes an RTS worse. Did I know Brood Wars heroes? I did know. My favorite is the Zergling hero, the devouring one. He's fantastic. I've used him on use map games before. weird to you that they're in 3v3 well 3v3 is like this is the attempt of uh, an rts company to try to get more players in that are more likely to try one versus one so if you're playing 3v3 you're playing it with friends it's hard enough to get a solo partner right but if you gotta get three guys together do they just literally you have to be friends with them right so then you got this little group of three friends that play together you got your little heroes, so the game's not too hard. And then maybe you'll try one versus one. What? Uriel Lungus call us cheer. What's up, Uriel? X300. Hey, Artie, have you seen the new Dune movie? And will you be going to see the part two coming out soon? I think they made this one a bit more faithful to the books. So if you are a fan and haven't seen part one of the new Dune series, it's on Netflix now. Yeah, so I did see, I did see part one. 
I've talked about it a little bit, but I'll mention again. Uh, I will watch part two. So I think part one, and I didn't think it was unfaithful to the books. I think it just didn't explain anything. Because my wife, who hasn't read Dune books, was sitting next to me, and I had to pause the movie over and over and explain to her what the fuck was going on because it was mostly beautiful cinematic scenes, but nonetheless cinematic scenes of people walking on and off ships in an epic fashion. It kind of reminded me of Peaky Blinders, right? Where it's just like, wow, look at these guys walk there. That's crazy. Look at that ship. That's crazy. Okay, and it was beautiful in that way, and I liked putting images to the things that were already in my head, uh, but if you don't know the Dune story, the movie really didn't fucking help you at all. They, like... This is what happens when you turn a fucking 500-page book into two two-hour movies, right? Uh, so, yeah, it's... I, I don't think that it's super great, but... Um, I'll be watching the second one. Yeah, the rumors of StarCraft 3 are complete bullshit. Uh, yeah, they didn't explain anything. That's the thing, Uriel. They, they did it Like, really? Like, it's almost hard to uh, explain how much they didn't explain, especially if you've read the books because you kind of know what's going on. You're like, oh, wow, that's what they think that looks like. Like when they brought in the uh, navigator, I was like, no shit, that's not the vision I had. Um, anyways, yeah, all sorts of things, right? Where it's like, oh, that's what the ship looks like. Okay, cool. Um, also, I don't think that they casted Duncan Idaho correctly. Don't think they did that correctly. Um, as much as I like that guy. But yeah, anyways... Uh, it, it was good actors and stuff. Like, I, I'm not hating on the movie, but it's like, it's really hard to turn a book like that into a movie. And it's really not, I don't feel like it's doing any favors to Dune. You know? <laughs> he was way too scrawny, flimsy, and weak. <laughs> Shit. No, oh, I love that guy. What is his name? Jason Momoa? No, I watched him in the Apple series C. C is one of my favorite, favorite TV shows ever. It was great. Yes. Yes, TV adaptations of books do way better than movies. 100 million percent. I'm loving Foundation. I think it's actually better than the books. Um. Yeah, C is amazing. But, um... Yeah, movies are a bad format in, in general. I did watch the Dark Tower movie. I liked it, but I haven't read the Dark Tower books. Actually, maybe I should read that. I've only read a little bit of Stephen King. Right, that's a Stephen King one, isn't it? But it looked really interesting from watching the movie, like the storyline. I was like, ooh, this is kind of cool. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah, the Empire actor is amazing. Yeah, th those three are great. Dude, it's, it's really good. You advise from your experience to do what makes you happy before you chase money success if you can. Yeah. Well, like you need to you need to um The thing is if you love something really a lot and you get good at it and you like work really hard at it and you don't think about the money, that can turn into making a living. I never thought I'd make a living like this, but here I am. Because I like never, you know, I just went for it super hard. But it's it's a hard thing to follow too. You do some people have to balance different responsibilities. It really it has a lot to do with how many responsibilities you have. If you're like a solo dude that's young, dude, you can take so many risks. It's crazy. I had no money. You know, when I moved to Korea, no money, no girlfriend, no fucking possessions, nothing. And it's like, yeah, I can live off of almost nothing. I actually lost a lot of weight. <laughs> because I was barely eating food, but you could take those risks, right? <sighs> but, uh, yeah, once you get older, maybe you, maybe you have some kids already and stuff, and then you have to balance it a bit more. So it becomes, it becomes more difficult, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. You just got to really focus your free time.
We're going to be getting you our next game in a second here. It's going to be a good one. I'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to install it. I'll state off buying a cord. My take on the Wheel of Time books and TV shows. So I never read the books. I knew about the series, but I was a Dragonlance reader and a Xanth reader as a kid. I, I read a lot of fantasy as a kid. I read my favorite series when I was a kid were Dragonlance, the Xanth series by Piers Anthony, and um, the Black Company series by Glenn Cook. Oh my God, Black Company's fucking, that one holds up like crazy. Uh, but yeah, that those were my favorite series. So I didn't read that one. But when I watched season one of Wheel of Time, it was giving me vibes from my childhood reading Dragonlance books, and that was making me so excited. I was like, God damn, I'm getting that feel. Haven't had that feel in a long time. <laughs> King Dwee be funny. <laughs> Mario looked at Flint Fireforge in the eyes. He had something stirring within him. No! No! <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, we're going to go into our next series. This is going to be a good one. We have Vindicta going up against Reaper. Uh, both these guys, 6K on the NA server. Vindicta, definitely one of the best Terrans. Reaper, a very strong Zerg. Vindicta is up 1-0 to zero in this series already. We're starting out on hard lead. Or hard lead, I still don't know. Uh, in the bottom right goes to Reaper. In the top left, Vindicta. And yeah, I'm ready to see how this is going to go down. Hmm. Well, um, you know, thinking about it, right? Like Vindicta is a pretty uh, heavy macro player. Plays kind of a turtley, turtley style, gets himself really going before he puts on a lot of aggression generally. Reaper, we've casted a few times, but I feel like I don't have a good recollection of his game. So it might have been some more one-sided series against like Koreans or something that I've casted him in. I know we've cast him a couple times, but yeah, I'm not not having a very good memory of that at the moment. So I can't I can't elaborate on what I think he's gonna be ending up doing here, unfortunately. I'll try to remember from these games to have a better idea next time we have him. But I mean, it looks like a pretty standard opener from him so far. Looks like Vindicta wants to do the SCV scout. This is just to check. Oh, never mind. He's going like way over here. So maybe Reaper is a player that will do proxy hatches or possibly even did it in the previous game. And it looks like he was kind of checking for that. But also he goes around the Overlord, right? So I think that that's certainly part of it. Oh, no. He pops in and sees the Overlord, and the, or at least the Overlord saw him, but I'm fairly certain he saw the Overlord as well. Kind of an interesting uh, scout pattern, but certainly one that was looking for proxy hatches. So going to go ahead and uh, continue to scout. And gets in, just sees the timing of everything. Normally, you just poke in to see the hatchery, but I think because he took, like, a different route, it was good for him to go all the way in just to make doubly sure. So, Reaper on the way. A single Marine popping out and making the factory. He'll certainly go for a reactor and switch him, I think, coming up. Hey, look, he has a picture of Goliath. That's kind of cool. Uh, nice, nice quick uh, reaction there on the drone. I actually thought he was going to lose that drone. That does get the uh, building going. Really annoying. He's going to... Ooh, ST4 just barely doesn't lose that one. What's up, Stanky? Tannis Half-Elven had never made love to an Italian plumber before. Dude. But he did walk in on Tasselhoff cleaning Stern's pipes one day, so he was pretty sure what to expect. Oh, my God. Ruining my childhood right now, for real. I cried over Tannis as a kid, man. Missed that series. That was a lot of fun. All right, so... Let's take a look. We don't have the third hatchery started yet. Instead, a much quicker layer. This is interesting. Uh, and he is going for another reactor as well as a factory. So it looks like we might end up seeing mass cyclones here. 
that's certainly what it looks like right now. Kind of interesting. We've been looking towards something like this. Or looking forward to something like this, I guess, is the right way to put it. Uh, and playing against this two base, that's that's kind of interesting as well, because it's going to be harder to overwhelm. Well, that used to be how you would fight against Cyclones, but it doesn't feel like that's necessarily the case anymore. Uh, this does, to me, look like right now that it might end up being like a two-hatch Muta opener, which was really popular a few years ago, but hasn't really been utilized much lately. Uh, I feel like I might have, in the last year, seen a pro gamer in a tournament use it like one time, maybe? It, maybe it was more than that, but I, I, I feel like I remember one time. Either way, uh, the masses of Cyclones coming out, I feel like will pair well against this type of strategy. Uh, you know, brings up this Cyclone and shows two Cyclones. So already Reaper's knowing that something's, something's a little bit off about this build. Nice little SCV up here, do some auto repairing, nice. Add a little bit of uh, sustainability to this. Uh, we'll we'll play it afterwards. Sorry, we'll uh, we'll play. I'm gonna pause donuts for now. We'll play them after this game. Uh, but yeah, so right now, uh, chasing down these queens a little bit, putting that extra damage. And the links come out. This used to counter them really hard, but as you can see, the quicker lock-ons are doing a fantastic job. In fact, picking off multiple queens, it looks like Vindicta may be able to go up and actually eliminate. Uh, Reaper here with a 2-0, like he is dealing some significant damage. Look at the amount of drones already dead. The Queen's all going down as well. The Spire not even finishing in. GG, Vindicta with the mass uh, Cyclone play. Dude, he literally just went two factory double reactor Cyclones in one. Nothing else, nothing to it. Crazy, crazy build. Really interesting to see these new units used here today. Okay, sorry. Let me play that now. What? Displacement cheered. X300, Diglett and Luigi sat on their picnic blanked. For a while they say in harmonious silence, enjoying the view and each other's company. And then Diglett asked a question that made Luigi's heart freeze in his chest. I have to ask, the Pokemon said with trepidation. Tell me if this is too forward. Have you ever? been with a Pokemon before? Luigi's moustache quivered. I haven't, he admitted. There was. Once, there was a Charizard but it didn't work out. Okay. Thank you, Displacement. <clears throat> Doug Triple, man. <laughs> I forgot about Doug Triple. Is there a Dragon Lancer article like on OnlyFans? Please, God, no. Now I can't. I can't actually. I have a really hard time reading uh, fantasy books anymore. Like I, I devour science fiction all the time, and I didn't like science fiction that much as a kid. Like I read Ender's Game and pretty much nothing else. It's completely opposite now. And 
Honestly, but, um, are you happy with this? Is this what you wanted? God damn. Oh, we are Bob. My wife bought me the first book because she read that. Uh, and she liked it a lot. But she bought me she bought me the first book. And I keep forgetting it's like I I have a lot of books. Like I have a huge stack of books that I'm looking to read, like twenty books that I have that I own that are like on my mind that I want to read, and that's one of them. But I have not yet. Oh, I typed Alex Ryder in to. Uh, no, I haven't bought any, but I, I I did type that into my web page. Hold on, next game. All right, here we go. We got Hero in the bottom right, and we have Vindicta in the top left. All right, this could be a really cool game. Uh, you know, their styles here uh, could clash a little bit, right? We have Vindicta, who generally plays a very turtled um, mid to to early late game Terran, where he wants to get like basically three bases up, mining really well, and then he'll start attacking. Uh, and he'll absorb your first few attacks really well. Vindicta is a very strong defensive player. And then you have Hero, who's one of the more aggressive players ever to have existed. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, obviously, Hero's a stronger player. He's a GSL champ. This guy has won IEMs left and right. Like, he's a fantastic player. Uh, so it's, it, like, definitely favoring him. But I think that there are worlds in which Hero tries an attack, Vindicta blocks it well, and then Vindicta gets a big enough edge that he definitely can win the game. So that's why I say that I think that this is a good hey, chat. matchup in that way. Dirty David here again. Oh, no. I just had lunch. I took all the caps off my keyboard and shook all the crumbs into my mouth. The taste was sensational. I'm feeling very fucking nasty. I'm about to watch a StarCraft 2 game. Even that's disgusting enough to give me pause. Okay, I'm going to pause, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, Malak. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have a Reaper expansion coming down here from Vindicta. <laughs> it's so gross. It's so gross. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh my god, it's so gross. I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Where are we at in this game now? I've like lost track of what's going on. Okay, so it's like a Reaper expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against a blink opener, it looks like here from, uh, I almost said from Dirty David from Hero in the bottom right. Uh, okay, so he's going to most likely be going blink here. Uh, you'd imagine it's going to be three gate with Robo. That's, that's generally what Hero likes to do. No one really does the four gate anymore, honestly. I feel like Max Packs and Parting are the... Well, Parting doesn't really play now, but, you know, those are like the people that I think about a little bit more with the, the possibilities with that, right? Having great Blink, Stalker, Micro, super important. Not that Hero does not. Hero certainly has uh, some of the best Blink, Stalker, Micro in the world, but I feel like the build doesn't work as much for him. Either way, uh, it's only two gates right now. We'll see. Okay, yeah, there's the third gate, as expected. Uh, I do like the add-in of the Hallucinated Oracle here to fly across the map and you know it just it gets scouting and it can make your opponent think at least for a moment that it is something else than what it is oh nice catch nice catch it seems like vindicta might have misclicked there slightly it looked like he was supposed to keep going up the main and then he like turned around for a moment it looked like brood war pathing but 
Uh, yeah, not sure about that exactly. Robo on the way, two more gas as well. Reaper comes up and sees uh, a little bit of a move out towards that third. Double mines being shuttled over with some Marines at the moment. Not sure if we'll see any damage found here by Vindicta. Kind of an interesting uh, position he's taken. I feel like what you're looking at right there, it could be to catch a warp prism flying in. Uh, I feel like that's more dangerous though. I think more likely it's to catch a hallucinated Oracle or Phoenix coming across the map. Uh, don't know if he'll have one go that goes over there, but if so, that would be a fantastic catch for him. Charge already on the way. It doesn't seem like there was any aggressive intentions this game from Hero. Yeah, the double mine drop, just kind of waiting for a moment. You might want to set up. Yeah, notice how right now on the left side, we have some Marines walking down. I think he wants to set up an attack and then boost in with the mines, right? So he's going to try to draw Hero's attention to the left because he's attacking a brand new third. And then the mines will come in. So see, he comes up, hits that adept really hard, and now he should boost in. And there he goes. And look at that. Hero's super, super fast. Really well done. I think some uh, Protoss players just would have worked against, honestly. What? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the observer right there. I'm like, damn. Really felt like that should have shot. Oh, my God. And he set up a Liberator as well. I missed that Liberator. Forces the cancel. This was really well planned out from Vindicta, man. Honestly, I, I, God, I really, I wish that the NA scene just had like a little bit better time than, than it does. Because I look at the play of some of these guys, like Trigger, like Vindicta, like these are legit good players. Like that, this was a very good setup with the Liberator, like the mines plus the attack, that in and of itself is fundamentally really good. But the fact that he had a Liberator slipped in there as well, he had incredible potential for damage. Now this is... The, the Protoss that we're watching here, right? Like, you have to give him top three Protoss in the world. There's just no, there's nothing, no two ways about it. It's like, creator him and Max Packs are basically the strongest Protosses. So, the fact that Vindicta sets that up, Hero does a magnificent job blocking it, but it was still good for Vindicta. Forcing the cancel doesn't get much with the, the drop, doesn't get much with the Liberator. Liberator's still there being annoying, though. Vindicta, pretty much on point for everything he wants to have. He's up in workers, which is kind of insane. Uh, and you know, it just, it's all looking, it's all looking awesome. Dude, he's putting out this, this beautiful, beautiful game right now. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, third command center gets going. I like the five barracks production. Normally five barracks production turns into an attack. In this particular case, if he sits back defensively, that is going to be better. Uh, hero has Psy Storm just now finishing. He has immortals. He's very low on bases and very high on units. So like the type of army right now that he has is very good against an attack. Uh, now we have a, ooh, a storm drop comes in nine SCVs. That's a lot. Oh man, good recall there too. Really solid recall, does not get the prism. If he didn't have recall energy there, man, that would have been that would have been sad for Hero. But gets out the prison, gets out the High Templars. Looks like he's gonna leave one in that main base. He's got such a great defensive position here. All right, does trade that. Okay, oh, some feedbacks go down. Not bad. Oh, and at the same time as that, he actually snipes the High Templar that was in the main base. Now that will get clean, but you know what? He's going up to third base again. Dude, Vindicta. Well, hold on. Does Hero actually have enough here? I don't think he... No, he might He might have just enough. Look, he's going to blink over to the side, tries to charge forward. A bunch of his zealots actually stuck behind, but he does have immortal, so he's going to knock out the tanks. And yeah, we actually have a, a good retreat there from Vindicta, knowing that that was going to go south. Again, some solid play from Vindicta. Almost gave himself an opportunity to kill the third base. Good pickup there on the Ghost. Redrops behind a couple mines. So you got to be careful moving forward, but he does have some observers here, so going to be able to do that. Zealot's come in for a flank, but he eats those alive. He'll blink forward to take out that, that uh, Medivac. 
and still trying to whittle this down. But dude, the Archon count is like these three Archons have tanked like almost a thousand damage already. Kind of crazy. GG is called. And you definitely can see from that that Hero is a better player. But like you see the moves from Vindicta. Like he has really some great tactics. He has really great ideas. But it's hard to keep up with like literally one of the absolute best players in the world. Right? Really one of the best Protoss players ever. Truly. And someone who's in good shape. So, but I, I feel like he put out a very good game there. That was that was nice. That was enjoyable. Why is Artos wearing a black check with a white hat and a bottle? Is he trying to be a reverse Oreo? <laughs> All right, we're going to the next game. Here we go. Hard lead. Uriel Lundus call us cheered. X300 is still think Hero has room to improve as he has a tendency to F2 move his army leaving his expansions vulnerable but other than that still a scary thought that he can still get better than he is. Oh, that is for sure. That is for sure. Uh, honestly, at this point, players are still improving but not really forced to improve that much. Uh, here's here's a couple hard facts, right? The Korean scene is not growing. It's, it's shrinking. It has been shrinking for a long time. There's never going to be a moment where Hero can't qualify for GSL or even be a contender for GSL. But for him to improve dramatically to like actually, actually like beat Maru regularly would take so much effort. And the amount of gain for that effort might not be there for someone who's already won a bunch of stuff. The guy's married, you know, like he's our, you know, there's, that's the thing. Like if, if it, if it was super duper competitive still, I could see him like, you know, doing some of those things. Because there's a lot of things like that that exist where it's like, well, you could improve a lot. It's, it would take a ton of work. But you already are in every tournament and you already make good money and, like, you're not going to go up that much if you grind all day every day. But, uh... Yeah. it's a good point. All right. So, a hard lead. The Nick are going out with that SCV scout. And yeah, we just got to wait a couple minutes here. Um, yeah, I do want to point out to everyone once again, I'm going to do this a few times today. Uh, you can use the command StarCraft 2 in chat. In Tothi Mad Cow. Hey, Chief. Mad Cow. X1600. Damn. Thank you very much, Mad Cow. Appreciate it. That's a big tip, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're practicing hard for our rematch. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, use the command StarCraft 2 in the chat. Uh, I do now have a StarCraft 2 casting channel, which may expand in the future. Not sure exactly yet. Feeling it out, working with Mapu on it. Uh, but yeah, you should check it out. It's uh, a lot of efforts being put in and, and will be put in as well. We're uploading these StarCraft 2 casts, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future than just NA Open Cups. Uh, but not sure exactly, exactly what as of right now. So... Stargate at the natural here. Uh, you know, for hero. Kind of an interesting place to throw it down. Looks like he'll go ahead and throw down his shield battery now. Making those adepts. Double reaper with two more racks coming up. Kind of interesting. So, three racks opener. You're right. This is something that we've seen Bion do like a million times. Now, I wonder what the idea is here. Does he want to do the early attack? I would imagine. 
right? If you're going to go through your axe, you do want to pressure with it. He's going to pop in here, throws down the grenade. Maybe not the best grenade there, but you know what? He sees an Oracle coming. He's going to get a couple probes at least. It's going to be impossible to stop him from that. Uh, the Oracle pops out, and yeah. Not too much you can do against that when the Oracle gets out there, but he gets to. Uh, makes Oracle use energy, sees where it's at. And sometimes against something like this, the, the, the three racks can do something if your opponent gets like too greedy, but it's hard to imagine that here from Hero, honestly. Uh, yeah, Hero, you know, his micro is so good. So it's like just making extra Marines, I don't think is going to be the thing that gets him, unfortunately, for Vindicta. Little fake shade in there. Does cost uh, maybe one mule trip? No, maybe not. I think it's going to hit it just right. The three depths coming in the other side now. Stim and combat shields here on the way. Going to fly away from that missile turret. Maybe he can get the edge though. Oh, kind of cute. Throwing down that uh, stasis ward. <clears throat> Just the continual shades right now. Oh, wow. I don't think he meant to do that. I think he meant to cancel. So a little bit of a mistake there without doubt. Uh, the three oracles may need to pull back to actually help fight. It is quite a strong group of marines considering you just lost three adepts basically for free. Stasis Wards, I've talked about this a lot in the past. I think it's the most underrated spell in the game by Miles. Like, look at how strong that is. One Stasis Ward from an Oracle. Stop this attack dead so hard, it's insane. Now, Hero did not deal with that perfectly, but in a lot of situations, you'll actually kill half the army for free. Uh, he didn't have a lot there. But yeah, Vindicta trying to punch through. Look at that. Overcharge. Everything going to die. Like I said, these three racks openers, I'm not a fan personally. I feel like every time I watch them, this is exactly the type of thing that happens to them. But uh, Vindicta in some, in some hot water now, I would say, right? Like, this is not looking good, and it doesn't look like it's going to get significantly better. Turns on his oracles, flies in here. Going to just devastate. Just devastate. Yeah, picks off that Marauder. Oh, Robo on the way here. Blink as well. Three bases up in mining here for Hero. It feels right now like Hero's starting to run away with the game. Notice he's up about 15 workers. He's even in army supply. He actually reduced the army count of his opponent quite a bit. And this was a three racks opener. This wasn't a tech opener. So, like, not only are you supposed to have a supply lead here as Terran anyway at this point in the game, but with a build like this especially, right? So, like, if the supply right now was 54 against 33, I'd be like, yeah, this is a pretty normal game state. As is, it really feels like... Uh, Hero almost has the game locked up. Basically, from Vindicta, we're going to have to see, like, a very, very good engagement. He's going to have to really slam one of Hero's armies. And then and then he can be right back in it, but, you know, that's, that's a hard ask. That's a hard ask. Oof. Still gets it out. Nice tag. Just kind of keep track of what's going on, where the army's at and everything. Charge on the way. Second robo. Let's see if he goes Disruptor or Colossus from here. 
Honestly, I feel like I'd go Disruptor. I think Disruptor's fine here. This, it feels like uh, Disruptor will keep the worst situations from occurring. And I don't think you need the, the more linear scaling of the Colossus. Oh, he does go Colossus, though. I guess since he almost has plus two, or it's a little over halfway done, rather. Colossus will be useful. Gonna take a little bit for those Colossus to kick in, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's a real attack timing coming anyways. So fourth, uh, fourth Nexus is on the way. And notice how no upgrades are coming right now for Vindicta. It looks like he's setting up for an all-in. Double, uh, double Liberator. We'll see if he keeps that with the army or tries to make that go around another direction. Honestly, I think you should just keep it with the army. It feels like your chances are already very tough. So bring everything together to try to make this unbeatable blob. Uh, we'll see. You know, the double Colossus is out, but only two. He's making two observers. He doesn't have Thermal Lance. You're not going to get a better attack timing than this. I like the setup there. I like those tanks up there, too. That's good. There's the boys. Ready to go. Force fields go down. Oh, overcommitting the boys a little bit. Uh, gets out of range of his siege tanks and some liberators. Liberators try to move up. Uh, a good warp in there from Hero, but the STV is doing a good job of blocking that. Uh, with the overcharge, I don't think he can quite break it, unfortunately. His seat shanks never did get moved up. Look at this. If it wasn't for overcharge, maybe. Maybe. But what are you going to do? Overcharge exists. Whew. All right. Well, that was uh, a little bit more one-sided than I was hoping, but I think you did see some, some moments of brilliance there from Vindicta. I think you showed some good stuff, which is, you know, all we can hope for. All right, let's take a look at the bracket. Thank you again, Mad Cow, for the big tip. Gumi Pig, Gerald Trigger, Mixu Bion, Hero Moves Up, Wayne Steadfast, Riser Dark. Hmm. Gerald Trigger's okay. All right, so I think what we're going to do... All right, this is what we're going to do. We're waiting for game two of Gerald Trigger. They're already in game one. Then we'll follow that up because it'll be Gumiho versus the winner, and that'll be a really good match. And then probably like like a Gumiho Clem or a Gumiho Bion. Or, you know, possibly one of them. They actually, they're very good right now. So I think that's a good, that's a good run to the finals, this side of the bracket. Ugh. Clever spin. There's a possibility. It matters how quick these other matches go. Yeah, Gumi is one of my absolute favorite players to watch, personally. I think I have more fun watching him than maybe anyone else.
Oh, I'm being told solar didn't show up today. So the bottom of the bracket, not doing too much. Oh. Thank you much, guy in the chat. Yeah, I'm like in Canada. Good place to raise a family. All right, I'm going to run to the bathroom. Sorry, I have to go again. BRB.
I'm back. Hmm. And guess what? Rolo drumstick. Absolute goaded drumstick. So good. Low income hooker. Thank you for the sub. Welcome to the guys in the chat. Taco Boat, thank you. Thank you for seven months of subbing. <laughs> Blabu, Drop Zone Killer, Fart Bath, thank you for the subs today, guys. Tetsaiga, thank you. Would I do an NPC stream for charity? No. Why do I love light mode? I don't use light mode. It is a little bit of an NPC stream, that's true. Dude, Rolo is literally the best drum suck. It's crazy. Last week, we didn't have any Rolo ones, and I tried a peanut butter one, and I was like, this is fucking garbage. Threw that shit away. <laughs> I appreciate it, Tetsaigo. I appreciate that you're smart enough to know this and say it out loud. I do appreciate that. Dude, it's so good. That filling in the in these, oh my god. I don't really eat chocolates. Here's what I like. I like an occasional ice cream. And I like oatmeal cookies. 
as far as sweets goes, that's about it. I have a weak I have a weak spot in my heart for oatmeal cookies. I love I love oatmeal cookies. I still like good sweets. <laughs> no, I don't. That's bullshit. Say GG. How many oatmeal cookies could I eat in a day? Dude. Let's say an oatmeal cookie. Yeah, like the size of a Subway sandwich oatmeal cookie. I could eat seven oatmeal cookies in a day and not get sick. Sixty grams of sugar, five hundred fifty calories. How big was this oatmeal cookie? Maybe that's like the oatmeal cream pie from like Little Debbie's or whatever, which are, by the way, really tasty. But I don't eat those. <clears throat> Just a straight up oatmeal cookie. The homemade are the best, but those are hard to find. No, I don't know. I The only oatmeal cookies I eat currently, my wife hasn't made them in years, but we buy a type from Atlantic Superstore. I don't know. Say it's the type that they make there. That's like the big grocery stores out here. Yeah, oatmeal raisin is my favorite. It goes oatmeal <laughs> raisin, then plain oatmeal, and then oatmeal chocolate chip. Oatmeal chocolate chip's still good, but like uh, plain oatmeal I like a little bit more. Oatmeal chocolate chip gets a little bit too sweet. That's kind of the nice thing about oatmeal cookies is they're a little less sweet than some of these other ones. No, dude, raisins are amazing. Actually, yeah, my wife bought some dark chocolate covered raisins. Holy shit, I gotta tell her to get another bag of those. Those were fucking good. That was like three months ago we had a bag of those. Holy shit, me and my kids devoured those. Devoured, they were big raisins too. Oh man, those were fucking good. Oh yeah, no, dark chocolate's by far the best chocolate. dude. I can't believe how sweet people will eat shit, right? Like, it's like double chocolate, like triple chocolate fucking sundae, and it's like so sugary, it literally gives me a headache if I take one bite. It's like, I look at it and I start to get a headache. Way too sweet. These people that have like these sugary cereals and pour like sweet milk on it, like fucking dude, what are you doing? How sweet do we want to make this shit? God. Milk. Milk is sweet, dude. It's got sugar in it. Past track to diabetes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, 85% dark's real good. I used to get that in Korea. They had it at uh, at uh, Home Plus grocery store. Raw milk, Portlandia air. Portlandia was pretty funny. I 
I love how you have decided. This is this is a funny thing chat does sometimes. RT, you go to the bathroom too much, get checked out, or it might be hypertension, the silent killer. The chat seeing me for like just this very short amount of time, they're like, ah, oh, you go to the bathroom too much. It's like, well, here's the thing, guy in the chat. I peed the first time, and then I had to poop later. So that's why I went a second time. But thank you for being like fucking WebMD for me. Watch out, Artosis. You might die. I saw you go to the bathroom twice on the stream. Wow, sick guy in the chat. Thanks so much. Okay, hold on a second, guys. We are going to check something out here. So the game that we've been waiting for, uh, Chicken Man is doing it right now. You can check his channel if you want. But uh, looks like it's a really epic PvP. Look at that shit! My God. Ho! Oh. Carriers and motherships. Damn! I wish we had gotten into this one. Obviously, it's Huntington's. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking darkness. It's like Artosis. I can't believe you had to both pee and then also poop. I think you might be diseased. I know. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy how sometimes you'll just pee and think, oh, I probably won't have to poop. And then you find out you do have to poop later and then people think you're sick. <laughs> Damn, look at these Tempests, man. Stop targeting interceptors. Dude, that's so much damage. Holy shit. Alzheimer's, I forgot to do it. Really, I'm trying to hurry back when I go to the bathroom. I used to be scared before I had pause buttons. I was like, God damn, I'm gonna get banned. I gotta go quick. Uh, but now that I have pause buttons, I'm a little bit more relaxed about it. But like, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure I get back as quickly as possible. What is a fart but your butt coughing? Am I right? Dude, we got crazy stuff going on here. <laughs> oh, now it's IBS? Sick. That is a lot of DTs, man. Holy shit. So it looks like Gerald's got this. So we should be getting into game three then, just momentarily.
Yeah, Trigger still has workers, but his supply is so low right now. I'm going to Thailand as a player, Elka. The feared old school. Um, yeah, definitely going as a player. I mean, I I would imagine I'll probably end up casting some games while I'm there because Zero's my buddy and they'll probably ask me to cast a little bit, but I'm going there to focus as a player. It's uh, My wife is coming with me, so it's like vacation slash tournament for me. I'm going to focus on playing and doing my best in the tournament. And hopefully I won't have much time to cast because I'm getting deep. Guys, my wife is going with me. You can stop with the fucking prostitute jokes. Thank you very much. No, the Ardo kids are, are staying with grandparents. The stream of the tournament? Yeah, yeah. It'll be on Zero's YouTube channel. Or uh, Zero's, uh, Zero's channel, I believe, right? I'll make sure to, like, tweet it and stuff and put it in the Discord and whatnot. <clears throat> Is this the promised honeymoon? No, we, we did that already. This was, like, Zero announced the tournament. I'm like... It's time. It's time that we get a vacation together. All right. Good job by Gerald. Very cool. Dude, look at this setup he's got. That's a good looking setup. Damn. That's nice. I like it. Chicken man fucks. <laughs> That's good looking shit. I like it. I like that. Wait, you guys don't like my <laughs> bags of garbage in my room? Prostitutes, come on. Does it snow in Canada? Yeah. Garbage, uh, garbage collection here is terrible. It's actually terrible. And the garbage men? Don't do a good job. There's rules for the garbage, and they'll just, like, decide that you broke the rules, and you go measure and weigh shit. And it's like, no, not even close. Literally not even close to breaking the rules, but they decided I did and left a note on my trash can, and it's not true. But there's no recourse. And apparently this happens to people all over the island. All right, let's go to the next game. Next series, or third game, third game. All right. So we have Gerald in the top right, Trigger in the bottom left. Looks like they just had a really epic PvP game. They're in game number three now. I don't expect it to be long like that again. That was kind of crazy. And, well, I mean, this is early game PvP. I'll let you know when something interesting happens. So we'll just sit back, relax. <laughs> wait for some cool stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Mad Cow. Uh, yeah. Hmm.
good old PvP openers. Both of them going two gate, so nothing out of the ordinary as of yet. The first thing we're really kind of looking for, guys, is well, depending on the the uh, map, you know, it can be a little bit different. But um, like ramp naturals, you have a different looking opener. But on a map like this, it's just what are the first two units they make out of the gateways? That kind of tells you the story of what they're trying to do most of the time. Uh, by the way, those accelerator zones are different than the speed up zones from before. They make you way faster. It's kind of insane, actually. It's a really interesting, uh, interesting thing that they're adding in. So let's see what they're going to make. Those seven X scores finishing up. Double stalker from Trigger. Okay. Double stalker from Gerald. So double stalker is the safest, safest opener you can have, right? So it's like, here's the, th here are the things that you could be looking at. Double Stalker, Double Adept, or Adept, st or, a, or a Stalker Sentry, right? Those are like the three that you can actually see. Uh, stalker Sentry is like more of a macro play. Double Stalker is actually safer, um, but lacks some of the scouting that you can get from the Sentry. So going four Stalkers on both sides. And basically when you're both making no nothing but Stalkers, you can't really hurt each other. So... They, you may see them try to poke each other, but as soon as they realize that, you know, it's basically the same thing on both sides, they'll back up. And sentry. Sentry. Okay. And what will we see from Gerald? Probably sentry, sentry. No, he doesn't actually have the gas for that. It looks like he was balancing his gas a little bit tighter. Dude, look how fast. It's crazy. And look at that. He just gets away so quick. Dude, what am I even looking at? Dude, these accelerator zones are actually insane. We need to see more of those. Like, they're only giving you the edge right there, and you see some interesting micro because of it, but I want to see more. Now, Trigger's going into Twilight quickly. Twilight coming up here for Gerald as well. Does feel like Trigger's opener is a little bit superior, right? Like, he got double sentry, and I don't believe Gerald did, so he's going to have a bit more scouting. Plus, his Twilight's a bit quicker. He is down a few probes, so I guess we do have that for Gerald. His adepts are going to be his form of scouting here. Blink on the way. Phoenix Scout coming up. Let's see if these Adepts can get a good clean Scout off. A little bit hard to do with the Adepts. A little bit more of a commitment than the, the hallucinated Phoenix, obviously. Yeah, I think you finish that. Ooh, that was an excellent force field. You got to give him that one. That was an excellent, excellent force field. Like, he, he nailed it. He didn't lose anything because of it. Oh, I can't believe that got away. But, yeah, I guess the stalker ended up killing it. So, uh, yeah, it seems like Trigger is just slightly outplaying Gerald so far. Gets the two of depths. Has the additional sentry. The quicker blink. Yeah, down a probe. That's fine. Beer is a soup if it has ice cubes in it. And I mean, I'm sure you guys, when you want your beer nice and cold, you put ice cubes in it. So that would be considered a soup. Okay, so uh, quick little move across the map by Trigger while he takes his third base. I think he's just poking right now. And he is going to poke at this third. Look at this. I don't think he has enough, though, does he? Okay, he does have that blink upgrade a little bit quicker, and he's really using it. Look at that. Loses both sentries, but this is actually legit for trigger. Yeah, that blink in very, very good. Gets that additional stalker. He does have to back up now. He does have to back up now. You crazy, you crazy. He blinks forward. That wasn't right. That wasn't right. No way you're taking that. No way, no way. A little bit of an overextension there from trigger. Little bit. Uh, but you know what? It worked out okay for him. A couple more stalkers coming up. There are some very red ones in there, so you might be looking to try to get those pickoffs. 
Oh, and now he takes the high ground. What am I even looking at, man? The maneuverability of Trigger here doing fantastically. But Gerald just has more. I'm surprised to see Trigger continues to try to push here. And they can almost outrun lasers under those. <laughs> this is a big push right now from Gerald. He actually has an advantage. We'll decide to turn around, though. Nice observer pick off. Third base is up and running for both sides within a couple probes of each other. Gerald right now with more supply. Has that better stalker count. Trigger adding a couple additional gateways as they both get charge and plus one. Immortal coming up here for Trigger. I like the uh, the Immortal ad. It's, it's interesting to me because it went out of style, but because Trigger lost a few extra Stalkers in those battles, I think adding that one Immortal in is going to give him the stability he needs so that there's no there's no kill timing here from Gerald. Because Gerald is Gerald does have a little of an a little bit of an edge, right? Gerald has backed all the way up. It does feel like kind of a big map, doesn't it? You know, these maps just came out last week, so uh, still kind of getting used to them. Was so used to that last set. You know, Dragon Scales, Gresvon, and, and all those. Uh, but yeah, still getting used to this one a little bit and uh, the actual distances. So even in these positions where it's like, oh, well, this guy's ahead. Well, he's so far away, it doesn't count as much. I mean, that's a, that's a real thing for sure. I can't believe he's walking up just like that, like he owns the place. Trigger goes right up the ramp. He has double Immortal in here. Oh, wow. Okay, backs up. He's got to target the uh, Stalkers as best he can, I would say. Okay, Blinks forward goes after the Immortals really, really quickly. The Charge Lot's doing a good job. A good big warping round here as well. And Trigger is like so rabid. It's kind of insane. But I think he's actually doing it. I think he's got just enough here with the Zealots that he's getting the, the good uh, trade at the moment. Blinks forward there, gets an extra Stalker kill. That fourth base that's finished up here for Gerald, was it too greedy? Seems like it may have been. Little Blink forward, keeps those Zealots zoning out the uh, Stalkers that are coming in. Does take a lot of hits to kill a Zealot for Stalkers. So does a ton of damage here, kills off 10 probes. Excuse me. Yeah, I like the Stalker Warpins here, too. That seems really, really good to me. Going to be a lot harder to take a defensive stance when it's mass, mass Stalker that you're up against. Okay, Overcharge comes out. He just simply backs up. Definitely the right call there. And actually backs up with everything, deciding not to go after that base. Leaves the other Nexus as well. I think he will go back to kill it, though. Like, Trigger has such an advantage. I think you do have to push it right now. So, yeah, it looks like he's going to blink forward here. Uh, down the ramp comes Trigger. He does have a couple sentries. He does have an immortal in here. But the charge lots more than make up for what he's missing. Now, the force fields actually give a good engage here to Gerald for the moment. Uh, definitely has a lot more units shooting. But now his probe count is dreadfully low. Trigger backing up a bit. Yeah, the double immortal are actually doing a fantastic job right now. Look at those immortals, man. Holy crap. That immortal at the top, or on the left side, rather, tanked so much damage in there and dealt so much damage. All right, he backs up. You know, the problem is that he just does not have the same economy as Trigger. Trigger is just on top of these warping rounds, continues to have a higher supply. The few charge lots he's adding in are fantastic here. Keeps that stalker advantage. He's moving into great positions here. 
uh, where he is a bit favored. You know, he's got this like high ground position. You lose vision for a half second there and some of your stalkers aren't gonna be firing. Greater surface area right now for Trigger as well. And I think we're gonna be seeing GG. Gerald is gonna end up falling. Really excellent play here from Trigger. And look at that, holds part of it, attacks in the natural. This forces Gerald up the ramp and, you know, we sh yeah, we'll see GG any second. Gerald's super duper giga dead right now. Not sure about this. Yeah, he blinks up, doesn't even one-shot the prism, unfortunately. Surprised he's still in it. That's going to be it. GG. All right. Yeah, the first attack he was a little bit... He was a little bit vicious on. So we're going to go into uh, Gumiho versus Trigger next. And that's a, that is a great match. That is a great match. Gumi Trigger. Looks like Byun Clem most likely. Uh, Nina's good and she plays a different style. But Clem, I think, is too good to really lose to anything offbeat. Unless you're like top four, five Protoss in the world. Something like that. Uh, we got Maples up here. This is kind of a weak part of the bracket. Maples is not bad, but... Oh, Hero already beat him. <laughs> Wayne versus Stark. Wayne's been doing fantastically. Don't count him out. He could he could win that. But we're actually going to be flying towards the end of the tournament pretty soon. There's actually a very good chance that we'll be able to catch some of Clem Byun. Uh, matters how long this series is, but uh, we'll try that. We'll see if we can hop in over there. Uh, well, actually, Hero Dark, I would really like to see as well. <laughs> so I guess we'll just keep track of what's going on. All right. Very good. Very good. We have our course of action planned. We're going to do Gumiho Trigger if possible. If we're lucky, we'll jump over and do Hero Dark after that. If not, that's okay. We'll probably do like Gumi or Trigger, whoever wins, probably Gumi. Going up against whoever wins like a Byun Clem match. Uh, and that'll be good as well. But definitely looks very likely we will not have a mirror match finals, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, Dark Hero. Dark Hero looks awesome, but uh, Dark is playing Wayne right now, and you never know exactly how long how long that'll take. Uh, Wayne's been doing fantastic in these cups. Wayne and Gerald are really, really coming up in these cups right now. Anyways, we'll be getting into uh, Trigger versus Gumio. They're vetoing the maps and everything right now, so shouldn't be too long. Sorry, Silver Vibes. Not my job, man. My hand is too tired to ban you 193 times. I gotta rest it. Keep my wrist healthy for my StarCraft games. Yeah, Gumi Trigger can be a really good match. Trigger's got some very good PvT. Uh, and Gumi's always fun. <laughs> Sorry, holding my baby can't ban Infeza types out, <laughs> which would be less typing to do anything else. Uh, let's see here. Dish placement. Gifting a sub to Silver Vibes. Shit. Imagine that if all Silver Vibes accounts had subs on them. Holy shit. I'd be rich. Oh, Dark took down Max Packs earlier? That's sick. 
That must have been a nice series. Wait. Dark is playing Protoss versus Wayne right now? Is that true? That's crazy. Oh, damn. I wish I could see that. Oh, that would be a lot of fun to watch, actually. Yeah, whatever I'm being mailed is going to be opened on Stream Guy in the chat. So don't embarrass yourself. All right, we're going to go into our next match, guys. This should be a good one. Gumiho versus Trigger on Red Who Set Station. All right, we have Gumio in the top right, Trigger in the bottom left. Rad who set station. You know, you guys are probably still learning the maps and the map names and everything. This is the map where basically four bases are free with one defensive location. Uh, we saw Riser earlier today with a really sick Tempest build on this map, which looked amazingly good. I would love, love, love to see something like that. Another thing I would love, love, love is a mech build out of Gumiho because again, there's like one defensive spot. This map looks terrible for Terran Bio. Dude, you, it, yeah, it looks terrible for Terran Bio. It, it, you know, it looks like a really good map for Protoss in my opinion. Um, Yeah, I think you got to do something special here, honestly. I'm excited about this though. Kybrit, 24 months, two years of subbing. Thank you very much, man. Hope you're enjoying the stream today. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm loving I'm loving the new patch so far. The new maps are actually kind of interesting. Like a map like this really does give you wait, that's a command center first. <laughs> I was I wasn't paying that close of attention, but command center first. Shows you how big the map is. It's a really long rush distance. The map is super defendable. This seems like a great build from Gumi. And Trigger's going to look at that and be like, damn. <laughs> X4000. Dude! Mad Cow! That is a lot of bits, my man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You've been overly generous today. And recently in general. Thank you much, dude. Yeah, uh, I see some people in the chat asking about the new YouTube channel. As of right this moment, uh, it's just, it's cast from my Twitch channel. Uh, like, we're just kind of like feeling it out as we go. Mapu is, Mapu is basically running the channel and uh, uploading from here. Um, just kind of choosing the best matches and putting it on. But there might be some other stuff coming there too. Not exactly sure yet, but thank you. Thank you for your interest. Definitely check it out. You can use the command StarCraft 2 if you want to follow it with a link. But yeah. Uh, so this build from Gumiho, fantastic, right? To go directly into uh, Command Center first is going to give him a big boost. Uh, we have a Stargate opener here from Trigger. We don't know if this is going to be like Oracle Tempest. We saw that from Riser. And as I mentioned, I didn't really watch any StarCraft 2 this week. So I just don't know if that's maybe a real build on this map right now. Was that a riser special? I don't know. We'll see. If Trigger does it, then it's it's something that's been done previously, right? You can't have two players doing it the same tournament. Maybe it's just meta on North America, right? Riser and Trigger both from North America. We'll see, though. I don't see a fleet beacon as of yet, but we'll hold our breath. So right now, Trigger mining out for that third base location. Wants to take that Nexus. Pretty soon, it looks like. <laughs> What's up, Maples? Good job today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hear. Um, yeah, Twilight coming up. Okay, so Twilight right after the Oracle. 
interesting. Uh, I imagine it's just going to be blink, and I think it should be a defensive blink, right? Like, um, well, actually, there used to be an Oracle into DT build. I don't think that would be good here, but just want to throw that out there. I, when that build existed, I actually thought it was a very cool build at the time. Third Nexus gets started. What? Second Intuffy gate is on the way. X345. What's up? <laughs> Thank you, Matt Cow. Damn, dude. Appreciate it. Blink on the way. A little tagging going on. Starport coming up here for Gumi. And, you know, here's the thing. Gumiho is like, he's massing up like it's a normal map. Okay. Now, I want to I wanna talk about this for a moment, right? Because this is one of the most turtleable maps that we've had in years. Uh, again, one defensive location for three bases as far as ground entry goes. Yeah, you could knock down rocks and mine through those minerals and get through, but, you know, that's 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 a tall order. Uh, ooh, a nice recall to bring that back for trigger. But, um, you know, sometimes people play overly greedy on a map like this, and a, a build like Gumiho sometimes can punish that. Trigger's not doing that. Trigger's actually almost playing it not greedy enough, in my opinion. Right? Like, he's he's got, like, two, three gates right now, blink... He made only one Oracle, and, you know, it, it feels like he's got more than enough that if he stays in his base, he should not die. Robo comes up. Little stasis ward. So Gumio with his third command center getting started, but this is after Trigger's third Nexus is done. Dude, you can really see how big the map is as the Oracle flies across, where it's like, well, hmm. No, oh, that was that was actually pretty reasonable. He sees pretty much what's going on. Doesn't do a full scout, but uh backs up instead. Gumio moving out with a good amount of Marines. Trigger should have enough that he does not end up dying to this. Now, will he try to do something right here? You could just boost over and drop at the third. That's a possibility. With only three stalkers there, yeah, you'd get you'd get the unload. He's doing it, man. He's doing it. Look at this. Oh, I think he saw the stalkers. Goes. Oh, yeah. No, that's not gonna work. Oh. So this is what I was talking about. Where these normal builds, like if Trigger just stays in his base, it's it's hard to imagine. Like if he had dropped it, he could have unloaded pretty much everything at the third base, but at that natural got totally slammed. I tell you, you like, it just, it, this is a map where I don't think anyone can attack each other. <laughs> it reminds me of Abyssal Reef, but bigger. If you guys recall Abyssal Reef. So Gumi right now kind of like walking out with his Bioforce. Again, not sure what he's going to do with that. You know, it, that's that's a funny thing about StarCraft 2. Like when you're, when there's a lot of paths for attacking, you get a lot of lot of action when the map's shorter and everything. I mean, that's obvious. That makes sense. But on a map like this, it's like there's nothing that you gain from trying to attack because if there's only one path and it's up a ramp or when you take the fourth base, there's like, I, it's not two paths, but there's like two sides you can attack from and they're kind of choked. So it's like, how is any of this ever gonna work? I guess is, is my big question. Second Robo Colossus being made. This game, I think, has, like, this map, you just can't not get into the late game. Look at this. He's got his photon cannons down. He is finally getting a second forge. Yeah, lost very little so far. The thing is, their economies are both getting so large that even those, you know, it's like, yeah, Gumio lost more than Trigger. It's like, well, I mean, it doesn't honestly matter that much right now. That's not something that's going to alter the course of this game, really, at this point. They're both so far into it. Quick move there by Trigger. Wants to keep an eye. Him floating over here, this is very intentional. He knows that that's the weakest spot that he has right now, is the side of his third. And Gumio was looking. He's like, yeah, maybe. Maybe there'll be an opening moment to get in there. 
So Liberator's on the way. Getting vehicle weapons. Huh. Three more racks. Double Forge is going. Sunken eBay coming up. I mean, really, it's time to transition. Both these guys are at like 170. And again, it like, even if Trigger comes out and attacks, Gumio can take these giant concaves. Giant, giant concaves. It is a little bit easier, I think, in a, in a map like this for Protoss and Terran, like without any doubt, which is why I was mentioned before, I wouldn't mind seeing Gumio do like a mech type build here. Because like, Gumio might be able to just completely out control this, but he does have to, you know, you're gonna have to control really well. Sets up, look at this location, man. Missile turrets, sensor tower, huge amount of marauders in the front. So Trigger is going to see this and go around the other side. Still going to be hard. So he's standing behind the planetary right now. You can't attack him with the Zealots because they will be wrecked. So what he's doing is pressuring with these Colossi. So pressuring with the Colossi, it's... He's, he's wanting Gumiho to make a mistake there. But Gumio doesn't really... You're not afraid of three Colossi killing your planetary, truly. Now, Prism goes in towards the main. That does put a bit more pressure on. You can see, yeah, can't attack through there at all. And Trigger gonna back up. <laughs> He's got three, two upgrades coming. Two, one is already done here for Gumi. He starts uh, plus two vehicle and three, uh, plus three attack. Plus two armor already going. Yeah, you're just... You're not... He can't attack. Like, look, he attacks and he loses like 20 supply. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, I guess we back up. This is, this is like really funny. It's like watching them like it, send shit into a minefield to check. It's like, are there still mines there? Oh yeah, there are. Okay, we can't pass. It's like, yeah, you guys can't attack each other. The layout of this map is like, it is, you, it, you know, this is why I was so excited uh, earlier tonight over Riser's game. Because he had a build that really played towards the map where he's like, you know what? We're going Tempest. Tempest is unit number four. <laughs> and then Mothership is unit number five. It was like a crazy game. Uh, and it was like a very smart build. And here you can see Fleet Beacon, Carriers, Psystorm, DT Blink. Like, I feel like they're, they're both kind of figuring it out right now where it's like, okay, well, we really can't kill each other. So let's go into like ultra late game. So Fusion Core and Double Star Stargate or Starport here for Gumi. Honestly, I wouldn't mind BCs here. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. Look at their banks start to go up. It's like, if you're not replacing units, your bank is gonna go up so fast. If your opponent's going for something like carriers, dude, I think you're gonna need the BCs. Now, he could go Mass Liberator. Mass Liberator's legit real good. But I wanna see the, the battle cruisers, man. It's Gumi. The based Gumi God. There it is. He's getting Yamato. So, yeah. So, we're literally going to watch Battle Cruisers versus Carriers. What a great time to be alive. Rad who set station, guys. This is going to be our this is going to be our giant macro map for a year. You're going to see a lot of crazy games here. This is hilarious. So, you see that happen, and you might be like, "Oh no, he screwed up. Why do you leave those bosses there?" He doesn't even want those. Didn't see that, but uh, looks like it was good. So, loot, like, he, I don't know if he sacked those bosses 100% on purpose or that was some sort of misclick or something, but honestly, well, I'd probably keep the bosses alive and, like, shred some zealots or something like that first, but, like, you need supply for your carriers, right? Like, a lot of the ground army is not, not that important. So now BCs are coming, double armory BC upgrades. We have plus one air attack here for trigger on the way. We have three carriers making fourth Stargate coming up. Mass command centers for Gumi. I guess the one big problem for Gumi is setting up the fifth base. For trigger, it's not an issue. As I've been mentioning, this map really does look good for Protoss in my opinion. 
you can see him just expand up the side and he can do cannons he can do batteries he can do warping rounds right dark templar high templar you can put a disruptor at a base if you really want uh right there's a lot of ways to expand and defend those expansions as trigger for Gumi, though, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder. It's like, do you float down a command center and make a planetary? Well, you can't lift a planetary, so it, it might die. Also, the more open you get, the harder it's going to be to defend against the uh, the incoming Protoss attack. So, yeah, there are little issues here that Gumi has to deal with. Okay, we have something happening from Gumi up at the top. Ah, uh, the double battle cruiser. All right, very cool, very cool. By the way, Prism speed coming. Also getting those plasma shields going. I like the idea, and he needs to spend supply anyways. All right, so there's the planetary, and this is what I was saying, right? Like you can just kind of come in and attack this. Now the two battle cruisers should be doing some damage now. And don't forget, these can just jump out. And there's no there's no real Protoss recourse to that. Like, he can just... Oh, dude. Where's the jump? What? I thought he flew those out. Am I crazy? Did he not just fly those out? Or did he jump those out? He must have jumped them out? I could have sworn I saw him flying out. But okay, my bad. Uh, loses one. Okay, he jumps some more out. Or maybe that's what the idea was. He wanted to jump more in to just kill all that. That's interesting. He could just perpetually jump BCs out there and then clear that side of the map and jump home. That could be a cool idea. A lot of Vikings being made now. We are transitioning more and more towards a uh, Sky Terran. Ooh, decent size storm there. A lot of Gumio units being picked off. Really, the important units here are the flying units and the ghosts. The ground units, really not that impactful for Gumi. You can definitely see that Protoss having a bit of an advantage here. Now, technically, battle cruisers can beat basically everything that Protoss has, but there are tactics you can use as Protoss to fight battle cruisers. There's like certain recalls, uh, tempest usage, that type of thing that you can utilize. But BCs actually can beat everything Protoss has. <laughs> I remember when we had that very weird one week of BC meta after Nathanius started using mass BCs and TY like mastered it. It was pretty sick. There were some fun games that week. Now some more turrets in the uh, center tower coming up. We have two two upgrades as well as plus two plasma. Another pick off there by Trigger. You can see Trigger definitely has a little bit of an advantage. But this is not, again, like the end of the game or anything. Uh, the only thing that we're really worried about right now is Gumiho, uh, you know, not getting that fifth base mining consistently. He does have a fifth base. It's just to the left of this and north. The north uh, west, I guess. Uh, and now he does bring those BCs down. So it looks like he's going to try to trade for a base. Now, this planetary, obviously, he can't really lift off. This is going to end up going down. So, again, the fifth base eliminated. We, you know, for, for Trigger right now, he, he's going to lose the top left, it looks like. But he's got five, six, seven, seven bases <laughs> after this dies. Okay, so Yamato's that and jumps out. Gonna have to continue that battle cruiser production. Some another siege tank being made. You know, I wonder about that actually. I wonder, like Viking BC siege tank. Is that is that gonna be like the sickest composition? You know, uh, there's not like perfect theory crafting of perfect comps because of course your opponent can always kind of counter you. But that sounds pretty solid. You have some siege tanks to zone out high templars and stalkers. And then, you know, you have Vikings to help uh, parry the, the air units. That could kill BCs. Yeah, I like the idea. But look at this. Dude, this siege tanks against these stalkers and everything. The Archon's trying to tank a bit. Dude, Gumio's engaged. Holy crap. Oh my 
God, that engage. That damage coming out. Jeez. Craziness. Okay. Has Trigger taken the lead? I mean, uh, Gumio taken the lead after that, though. How many battle cruisers does he have, I wonder? Like, he's got an insane setup right now. Just insane. Archons. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really blame him. Uh, Archons do a good job tanking, and if you have something like a swarm of uh, Vikings, Archons can be really good in that situation as well. So, five BCs flying out. Some very good size storms. I like these little scuffles we're seeing. They're kind of fun, right? A little bit of a micro battle, a little bit of cost efficiency one way or the other. Uh, but not necessarily what's going to end up deciding the game, but can can start to tilt the game in a favor, right? 3-3 three is on the way for these BCs. They're going to the top left again. Now, if he can hold on against this main army and his BCs go ahead and kill everything in the top left, then Gumio is in a very good position at that point, I think. Now, the Vikings not being very useful. Oh, man. The, the battle cruisers come home, and it does take them a minute, but they start to change that battle immediately. And, well, immediately after they warp in, and it can actually attack again. Uh, some size storms coming down from that high ground. That is a lot of stalkers right there. But as the tanks come up, he is going to have to back up. Yeah, the tanks start to absolutely shatter those stalkers. Damn, what a game this one is. More carriers on the way. A Colossi. I don't like Colossi anymore. I wouldn't want any more Colossi, I think. I think Colossi are a weak, weak choice here. Interesting watching the compositions grow. Comes in with, oh, dude, that prism got totally wrecked. And now Trigger's trying to break him with gateway units, which I'm not so sure about this. Like, the gateway units are are pretty good, but against a well-upgraded bio plus the BCs doesn't seem like this is a very good choice. Like, I think you you definitely need some higher higher level techs here from Trigger. You know, I think Trigger had the advantage earlier on, but Gumiho really has gotten himself into a pretty good spot with this. Now, that being said, that's a big disruptor ball. Uh, a lot of Zealots getting in on top of all of this as well. BCs may have to end up getting out of here. Ooh, just barely, just barely gets out. Some Tempest being added in now as well. Heavier Vikings being produced from Gumi. Oh, yeah, I forgot that that was a gold base. I don't know why. <laughs> we never really get zoom-ins of that one, but... Uh, yeah, gonna go ahead, retake this base. Gumio is. Even dropping mules there. Not even given, given a care in the world. So the fact that mules on gold bases are reek of inefficiency. Zalot's gonna come in, try to surround this immediately. I like the Liberator coming in, but... Uh... 
Is he going to save this? I think just barely. Oh, God. Look at this. Gumio's army on some sort of, like, move command doesn't get there in time to save the planetary, unfortunately. So Trigger will get that kill. If he had saved that, that would have been kind of a big moment there for Gumi. Comes in with BCs. Just murderizing those probes. Yeah, look at this. Gumi Ho right now. <laughs> Floating down another command center for that gold base. Just clearing with his Bioforce. Now, don't forget the Bioforce can't warp back. Trigger has a very funny looking army at the moment. Is going to try to use some Psy Storms to get the repairs off. But Kumio is just doing a better job. Trigger, Trigger still has a bank left. I don't think the game is over right this moment. But it does definitely feel like Gumiho is is making better moves right now. Well, that being said, like, he's pretty low on uh, the medevac energy up here. Should definitely get that uh, medevac energy upgrade. I actually didn't notice if he got it. But that, that could be useful. I'd like to see that in use. I don't think I've seen it used yet. Hmm. I love how Trigger just keeps throwing Nexuses down. No problem. Well, some very good size storms going down here from Trigger. But it seems like his army is a little bit flimsy. The Colossi, I don't know that they're really doing their job well enough here. A lot of these Marauders are getting very, very low, but they are going to be able to pick off that Colossi. And in fact, the air unit's starting to take some big damage here as well. Turns around, fights with the Zealots for a moment, pulls them back as the overcharge heals everything up. Both sides falling dramatically in supply. Oh God, single DT over here ruining everything. 13 kills. Insanity. That was a pretty wild DT right there. All right, Gumio coming in, gonna gun down this Nexus super fast. And of course the Nexus behind it should fall as well. Look at this, his BC's dealing with the bases in the top left and his army dealing with the bases in the bottom right. Making it very, very tough right now for a uh, trigger to keep an actual economy together. Yeah, maybe we had those warp out. Tempest, though, doing a good job kind of countering those BCs lightly. Gonna leave that ghost behind and eye the Nexus if it tries to come back. Some long-distance mining going on. Kind of a... A wild game. The fact that they're somewhat close in supply still is is shocking. The game has been so insane back and forth, like the trading of these very, very different armies with each other. Oh, nuke time. All right. <laughs> this game truly has it all. Mass battle cruisers, mass carriers, nukes. This is what you want to see. Oh! Get wrecked, Zelots! Oh my god, they got too close to it. Gumi out once again, sending some units to that top left. The DT blink on top of the Siege Tanks. Love to see it. Doesn't quite work out. A little bit late on the scan there, Gumi. Damn, Zalts are fast. Your ghosts are so tanky. All right, so Gumio retaking 12 o'clock now. Battlecruiser's down here to make sure this isn't retaken. Look at the Tempest chase him. 
Well, if they pick one off, that's a pretty big deal. Look at that, getting out immediately. Hopefully they'll go back and repair those up. The banks on both sides are very, very depleted at this point. Trigger doing a bit better as far as mining goes, but I think that is about to switch over to Gumi. As he's landed 12, he should start dropping a lot of mules there. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny in the late game when you see like 12 mules dropped on a base. The speed with which those minerals get sucked out. Crazy. Yeah, definitely some more cost efficiency here for Gumiho so far. We definitely saw those battles where that was occurring. I think we have a couple battle cruisers going across the top of the map here yet again. Battle cruisers seem very good here with the distances. Like the fact that he keeps denying this base. He's denied this base like five times with battle cruisers. Just flies over, screws up probes, sometimes kills the Nexus, and jumps out when he needs to. And again, if you're on top of those battle cruisers, it's pretty hard to counter his Protoss. You got to be pretty serious about it. Yamato's coming out. So I think you got a disruptor and hit a Colossus. Definitely going to want to jump out and does so. <laughs> Good try. Good try. He was trying to snipe the High Templars there. I uh, did get spotted by the observer. Tried it. He got an EMP off, but did get killed off. Nice little storm. Gumi is maxed out here once again. Don't forget, he's down in workers by 18. So not only is he up by 25 supply, he's up by an additional 18 as far as army goes. So that is a pretty significant uh, army supply advantage. Now, Trigger's armies is still pretty good. He's got some splash damage in here. But, yeah, this push with the siege tanks, it seems far-fetched to think that Trigger's going to be able to stop this. Now, going after that Nexus, I like it. Just a small group of Marauders. It reminds me of Terran versus Zerg engages against Mass Bane. All right, throws Yamato down, does not kill the Nexus, but up come a lot more units here. We had to bounce out from the BCs. Not exactly sure where they went to. Ah, they just bounced back. Uh, and Gumio trying to overrun this whole army, but hold on. What am I even looking at here? That is a huge amount of bio from the south. It looked like uh, Trigger was starting to hold it, but it's hard to imagine. Oh my God, those storms. Oh! Just wild. That was so much bio eaten up by those size storms. And now he's going to kill the battle cruisers too? GG, Trigger takes it. What in the world was that ending? Oh my God. Oh my God. Woo! That was, dude, that was crazy. That was crazy. My voice is tired now. Uh, don't a single EMP wouldn't have won the battle. Um, it, it, EMP only takes 100 shields. It's not like StarCraft One EMP. It doesn't just pop the Archons for you. It's a rewatch ending. No, we're going into game two.
So we have Gumio in the bottom left. Trigger in the top right. We're on Hecate or Hecate. I don't I don't know, man. If you're a weeb, it's Hecate. If 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 not, it's Hecate. Um ST4 and Kai Hangler. Thank you, what's up? X300 RT Dragoons. Can we talk about this for a minute? Yeah. When they die on the map, they squirt blue liquid all over the place. Oh, no. They seem moist. I was wondering why you call them Dragoons. What does Brian say when he says Dragoons? Is it Dragoons or Dragoons? I've been watching your stream very carefully and I've wanted to bring this up and not sure if you've given this much thought or have any opinions on the subject of Dragoons. <laughs> I believe I believe he calls them Dragoons. Which is almost dry goons, but not quite. He's aware that inside they are anything but dry. Luckily in this game, we don't have dry goons. We have blinking dry goons. Not quite as strong, though. Uh, so. You know, actually, that reminds me of something. Uh, you know, there was uh, um, Starbo. A long time ago, you guys might remember. I actually was a pretty big fan of Starbo. It was kind of StarCraft 1 in StarCraft 2, but not exactly. They had some elements of StarCraft 1, some of StarCraft 2. So they had units like the Vulture in there. Uh, they had both the Dragoon and the Stalker in there. It was actually really interesting. That's just, you just kind of made me think of that, right? Because like uh, Dragoons, it, the Dragoon is like somewhere between the Stalker and the Immortal, right? That's... I think lore-wise, they kind of did something with that, too, where, like, the Immortal is the new Dragoon or something, and then the Stalker is the more mobile version, so they kind of split Dragoon into two units. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it, yeah, that was a... I, I like that mod quite a bit. I, I thought it actually had, like, a kind of cool future, but it definitely did not, unfortunately. But I thought it, I thought it was neat. Anyways, uh, Stargate coming up here from Trigger. Uh, this game shouldn't look anything like the last. That last, dude. That that other map, Rod Who Set Station. Uh, I think you're only gonna see like carriers and battle cruisers and things like that on it because nothing else makes sense. It's just so defendable. Uh, as far as Hecate goes, I don't know. I don't know much about this map yet. Haven't seen that many games here. Haven't haven't casted. Well, I guess all the games I've seen here, I've casted here as well. Uh, but yeah, I haven't casted many games here yet, so I don't have like a strong opinion here at the moment. Um, yeah, I guess we just kind of chill for a little bit, see what they want to do. Okay, so it's going to be a Phoenix Colossi build here from Trigger. On the other side, some Hellions being made. Definitely a Medivac will be coming out of that uh, Starport here from Gumi. Definitely be trying it later tonight, Stanky. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Let's see what Gumi gets done here. Oh, he actually went Tech Lab right away. I'm sorry. So, whoa, that looks like an Ultralisk. Dude, that huge critter is awesome. I forgot about that. I remember seeing that last week. That thing's crazy. Uh, but anyways, it looks like we might be seeing either a Raven or Banshee play. It is going to be Banshee with Cloak. Banshee with cloaks, surprisingly, can be good against Phoenix openers. We'll talk about that in a minute. Because right now we have these Hellions trying to run in for some damage. One liftoff does occur. He's going to grab another one. Very important to get him off the ground. And, yeah, picks up another one here as well. So he ends up trading here uh, four, four uh, Hellions and the Reaper for seven probes. And, I mean, it did, it did force some lifts, so that might be SCVs that he saves later on right keeps the phoenixes back a bit longer was that worth that i feel like that was somewhat close to even i think if gumio had gotten nine or ten he'd be really happy about it uh as is though i don't think you can be upset like i think it's i think it's enough that you're like okay well you know considering what this game was looking like it, it, the hellions are not going to scale the reaper's not going to scale so you do want to utilize those early on they're just going to get less and less damage the longer it goes Anyways, I was talking before about how, uh, you know, it, Cloak Banshee can actually be very, very good against Phoenix openers. Now, the Phoenixes see that he's getting Cloak, so they'll probably turn around and he'll probably Chrono Boost out an Observer real quick.
But a lot of the times, like your observers are a little bit late. They might not be in the right location. The Banshee sometimes can get some serious damage. So the Phoenixes, I think what we'll be seeing is a recall. He hasn't started the observer, so I think he hasn't actually realized what's going on. So the observer gets started. Battery saving a lot of lives there. Okay, does save that one. Only two so far. That battery at the natural really foiling Gumio's best laid plans. Gonna go ahead, send his other Banshee up in the other direction. This is a pretty map, by the way. I enjoy the aesthetics of the new maps. I think the map makers are quite artistic with their maps nowadays. Like they just, they look good. They're, they're very cool looking. It's kind of fresh. You know, when all the maps look a little bit more the same, I feel like it can be a little bit more boring to cast or watch or even play. But like this looks really cool. I, I love I love like the dark platforms with the the bright foliage. Beautiful map for the fall. All right, setting up some defense there, some missile turrets on the sides here for Gumi. Getting his production really going. I love that thing. Dude, look at it. If I was on an ice planet, I would cut that thing open and sleep inside of it. Now, Stalker coming out for a little bit of a, a scout here. Scan goes down to make sure there's not more behind it. Observer being kept uh, over with those Phoenixes to try to catch any incoming... Uh, Oh, dude, look at that supply block, man. Gumiho, MSL, or uh, MSL, GSL champion getting giga supply block there. <laughs> Has to start three depots at once and drop a depot. Damn, man. Imagine if we had depot drops in StarCraft 1. I'd be a pro gamer. All right, so. Yeah, this one adept, not doing that much, but Gumiho does run back to knock it out. Templar Archives on the way. Yeah, this is pretty normal for Trigger. Trigger really does like when he does a build like this. He gets the Templar Archives, makes two Archons and attacks. That's a pretty common move. It's not just Trigger that does that. A lot of Protosses uh, enjoy that type of timing. Uh, the Archons add a lot of tankiness, and your opponent like never has EMP at that point. So that can be a really good move. Now, Gumio back at home. Four Vikings at a time. Uh, getting that armory as well. Male Ursadak. Ursadak. Ursa means like bear, right? Dak? I don't know. Kind of close to chicken in Korean. <laughs> um, now, there's an Archon, and we're, we should have the second Archon get started. There's charge, there's plus one, there's the second Archon. So, like, this is like a moment where Trigger's army is like pretty darn strong. I don't know if he's going to attack or not. He could just sit defensively on this. Oh, he just starts blink now. Actually, no, I guess that's actually fine with the, the timing of uh, everything. The Phoenix opener. For a moment there, I was like, wait, what? Hmm. But yeah, getting charged first when you open with Phoenix is good. Four Liberators on the way. Oh, look at Gumi's army. Look at this handsome, handsome army. Very Viking heavy. And with four Liberators and Liberator range on the way, that really makes an interesting composition. You know, Liberators are, uh, in my opinion, one of the best things that you can go for a late game in this matchup. I really enjoy heavy Liberator play. Ooh, big volley, big volley. No whammies. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's old enough to get that one. All right, so four Liberators out, two more on the way. There we go. There's my old guys in the chat. <laughs> Referencing daytime television from 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reruns were on when I was a kid, so. More Liberators coming up.
I'm really digging Gumio's play here. I really, really am. Look at this setup. How do you engage this? How do you engage this? And look at his Vikings just dance looking for free shots. Dude, this is crazy. Look at that. The Phoenixes fly in and take a million damage. Look at this. Look at this. Backs up, backs up. Oh, you're going to walk under there? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, it totally works. Never mind. No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Dude. Protoss units are pretty good. Man. He had like six Liberators siege there and a bunch of bio behind it and a ton of Vikings. And Trigger's just like, yeah, I don't know, bro. Get out of here. All right, going to set up some more Liberators. Um, yeah, only has three right now. 20 Marauders on the map. That is definitely a lot of damage. Banshees continue to be somewhat useful here on the defense. Looks like we're getting, going to get into a fleet beacon. Uh, I would imagine that this is going to be for Tempest when you're playing against mass range liberators. It's really fantastic to get a few Tempests out there. I actually forget the amount that one shots a, a, a liberator, but get that. Yeah, Banshee's doing a good job pushing back some of these zealots as well. Plus two uh, air attack on the way here for Gumi. So that, you know, plus two air attack is huge on Liberators, allows them to two-shot Stalkers. And that is, like, the, the amount that that changes the engagement is so, so big. Those are always the biggest types of upgrades, right? The old plus two Banes, uh, plus one Zalots against Lings, plus, plus two Liberators against, uh, you know, Stalkers, plus two Siege Tanks and Brood War against Siege Tanks, right? There's all sorts of different things like that where it's like, yeah, this upgrade is, is like, breaks stuff in half. Oh, Phoenix range. No shit. That's cool. That's cool. I'm down for this. Okay, so right now, Trigger is moving forward. I hope that this game does not end here. Wow, that's a lot of damage output right there. Ooh, does eat that, uh, that Disruptor shot a little bit. Now, this attack coming down, he's just trying to save his command center because he has a big enough army to push that back. Gumio, in the meantime, hitting 12 o'clock is going to be able to kill that Nexus. Trigger force this one away but decides to turn around to go home and defend and Gumio did save that command center oh my god he's gonna get rid of both robos well he unpowers one gets rid of the other immediately Gumio with another attack holy crap he is just jumping upon everything right now Yeah, like, you are going to be able to kill this army as trigger, but how much are you going to lose? Woo! <laughs> Crazy attacks. And the Banshee's still going to work. He's going to get the shields off that. What are you going to do about that? All right, so 30 probes went down. Trigger is, well, 53 workers still. He's still got reasonable supply. I was kind of excited... Uh, before that that happened because we had like three or four, I think he was going up to four Stargate, Phoenix range and Phoenix production. So like I mentioned, like I, I thought what we would end up seeing was Tempest to knock those down. Instead, it looked like he w wanted to go mass Phoenix and use mass Phoenix to knock down the Liberators as well as the Vikings, at which point you'd probably transition out of your Stalker composition a bit more, probably heavier Colossus, heavier Zealot is my guess is what he would want to do with that. That's what, when people used to try moves like that, that's what they would do. But moves like that are not that popular. Now he's making five, five Phoenixes at a time. So it was even more than I was saying. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Now, the one thing to mention is that when you're making this many Phoenixes and you have stalkers in your army, those two units overlap in their usage quite a bit. So the actual, like, when you look at the supply of the army of what Trigger is about to have, <coughs> it may lack a little bit of a punch. <coughs> now, that being said, Gumio coming up with a huge attack here. Trying to knock out Trigger's last mining base. And Trigger's having a pretty good engage, honestly. He's going to save it. If those Liberators had moved up, this might have worked. 
phoenixes with their just absurd range for that upgrade <laughs> going to town here look at that look at that that's some crazy stuff all right gonna try to push forward the phoenix is doing their job marauders getting in and targeting down everything all the splash damage gone that's gonna be a gg gumio takes game number two dude crazy games Wake up sheeple donated $3.33. Who did 9-11? George Thank you. Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, this is one of my favorite hats. It's good a good hat. Oh. The blue w whale penis w is the largest w in the animal w kingdom. W it is commonly cited as having an average penis length of 2.5 meters, 0.8 feet, 2 in, to 3 meters, 9.8 feet, and a diameter of 30 centimeters, 0.12 in, to 36 centimeters, 0.14 in. The only creature in known existence with a larger rod is Erotis, the man himself. The rod slinger extraordinaire, father of four offspring. Erotis is known to be over 12 feet in length and 40 feet in girth at max arousal. Amazing. George W W W W W W Bush donated three dollars and thirty three cents. Okay, we're gonna pause after Johnny this. Johnny turned on Twitch and sighed heavily as he saw Artie was casting SC two tonight. He ripped his shirt off, leaned back, and began to spin his tits that were dicks super fast and flew out the window <laughs> like a dictated helicopter. Not tonight, Artie. <laughs> so stupid. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're in game number three right now of Trigger versus Kumio. Trigger in the top left, Kumio in the bottom right. This is Oceanborn, our underwater map. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've had two very good games from these two so far. Uh, honestly, it does feel like Kumio's outplaying Trigger. Uh, game one, Trigger did end up winning, but that was a pretty darn close one. And it felt like Kumio was actually making better moves uh, throughout the late game, but maybe it was a bit too far behind. Uh, but yeah, Trigger had some great defense there as well. But a very good series so far. Very, very, very good. And now we just kind of kind of wait, see what these guys want to do as far as their game plans go. I liked the Mass Liberator. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that again if we get into the late game. I think it's a very fun unit for the late game. Uh, double Gas scouted here by Trigger. So he's going to know it is a factory opener. Uh, quick, just little shout out here. There is a new YouTube channel for my StarCraft 2 casts. It's Artosis Cast 2. You know, I have Artosis Cast. Just, uh, that's a channel where I only cast Brood War. And this one's going to be for StarCraft 2 and, and possibly some other RTS games in the future. We'll see. And uh, yeah, Mapu's running that. And uh, yeah, you should check it out. You can use the command StarCraft 2 for a direct link. But if you're a StarCraft 2 fan, definitely go and subscribe to that. If not, you better already be subscribed to Artosis Casts. And if you're not subscribed to one or the other, why the hell are you watching me? For the donos? Really? There are people like you? Actually, it might be most of you. Anyways. Uh, what? Barry cheered. X300. Oh, God. Okay, last Detective dono, and then we're Zero pausing. Gave the fusioneer in Goku left him in his Saiyan will to George W. Bush. Together, they would do the fusion dance and fuse into Detective W. Bush. <laughs> Ariel from the Little Mermaid peeked at the dance through a crack in the masonry, and it turned her very on. She almost forgot about Mario entirely, but nobody forgets Mario. Most excellent, Beery. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Twilight coming up. Uh, a reactor to, uh, uh, Reapers coming out right now as well as some Hellions
And well, we'll see what type of pressure he can put on. Starport on the way, as well as that uh, command center at the natural. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Trigger falls back into his two gate blink uh, robo into third base. He really likes that type of play. Buffalo Benjamin, thanks for the sub. All right, so, I mean, he's got a shield battery, which is nice, but that's a lot of possible damage incoming. Good grenade there, very good grenade there. Loses one of his Reapers on the way up. Let's see how many probes he can end up getting. This, oh, that was actually very good to pick off one of those uh, Hellions right there. Definitely needs to get the other. Okay, does end up getting it. So this was mm, six. Okay, six as the final tally. Seven is the final tally. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, when Trigger's trying to defend as hard as he can there and you still get that many for these units that are not going to scale at all, I think you can't complain too, too much. Uh, but Trigger's still well up in workers, which is a little bit painful. Of course, he gets uh, Nexus a little bit quicker. Right, we're going to have a... Oh, no, the mine drop tried to go in, but it looks like it got pushed back. I was just kind of watching the minimap for that one. Yeah, I'm going to lose the Adept there. Yeah, it took some damage. Wasn't able to really do very much. With that uh, follow-up mine drop, third Nexus about halfway done right now for Trigger. And uh, Raven is out. Yeah, don't forget, you are going to have to uh, research the upgrade there for the Disable, right? So Disable definitely has been nerfed. I think he'll probably utilize the Raven just for harassment. Yeah, Gumio's just going to send that across the map. That makes a lot of sense. I think that the days of uh, timing push Disable against uh, Colossi, probably gone. Probably gone. But, you know, the auto turret harassment still can be really good. If you get a map with the right kind of a dead space behind the, the natural or the main, it can be really nice. Still leaving that uh, medevac there, keeping an observer on it. Doesn't want that to come in for free. Ooh, this could be good. There's nothing there. Might be waiting for double turret energy or something like that. No, I mean, it seems like he's fine. We'll see. Maybe waiting for something else to happen. Maybe throw down the auto turrets and then go ahead and boost in with the, the mines at the third base. That could be a good move. This could be a good moment to do it too. You know, you know Trigger's looking elsewhere. Okay, look, look at that. Okay, so he draws attention. It's time for the turrets. Let's do it. Okay, not bad three. No, it doesn't quite get three. I thought he was going to get a third. A lot of times there'll be one that's popping out of the gas as you run everything away and it'll get picked. A couple of stalkers being picked off there as well. Gumio pushing across the map. Gumio's army supply is pretty, pretty fearsome right now. He's about to have a, a combat shields and plus one attack. Plus one attack may not be done by the time he gets up to the space though. Now another auto turret goes down, picking off these probes. Trigger could be in some trouble. <laughs> just watching him. Trigger should be a little bit nervous about this. This is this is going pretty badly for Trigger. Uh, you know, the, the auto turrets are continually causing him trouble. Lost mining time, lost probes. And the army sitting outside is very scary indeed. Another medevac coming up. Looks like we may see him pull back. Yeah, I can't quite, can't quite zoom in there. A bit of harassment. Not going to deal that much damage. Forge coming up here for trigger. In fact, double forge. Looks like this is the way that he wants to go. 
Now, if he's going to go double forge here, yeah, I was going to say, he needs to add a fourth command center as well because you're playing for a much longer game and you don't want to be doing that on three base. Like, if he was going to maybe power up and try to move across the map, that might be one idea. I don't like it. Uh, but if you're going to go double forge, you may as well throw the Nexus down too. So he's going to be two Robo, two Forge, four Nexus. If he holds on for a little bit, this is going to be very, very good for him. And I think he's going to. It doesn't seem like Gumiho feels like he has any sort of uh, opportunity for a kill or anything like that. So Gumio is set up very, very nicely at the moment. I like the Raven helping him get rid of some observers. His fourth uh, command center is going to be finishing up. Of course, the fourth Nexus is just about to finish here as well for uh, for Mr. Trigger. Getting some disruptors in there. Oh, I like the disruptor adds very, very much. Very, very much. That's going to make him defensively much stronger. Uh... You know, any attack from Gumio is still a bit scary. There's so much, so much Terran supply right now. And you definitely need those, those extra defensive units. And Disruptor is definitely one of the harder things to attack into. A little bit harder, to, uh, a little bit easier to engage when Disruptors are attacking you. Whereas if you're attacking into Disruptors, they can sit very far back. Oh, this is kind of a cute position. Now, Trigger is going to have to deal with this very calmly. I think that's one of the main things that we need to take away from this. Like, he needs to not worry about that, basically. Oh, God. What is this move command? <laughs> Gumio gets a lot of free units there. Now, Gumi unloading into the natural, he realizes, oh, Trigger might be doing a counterattack, so we got to get this damage ramped up. So by ramping up this damage, he does force trigger to take this more seriously i said he had to be calm about this but the way that he started moving across the map was maybe not the way to do it right that's almost too calm just letting him hit everything so gumio is starting to abuse that Woo! oh my god the fireman terran runs towards damage with his uh, marauders that was crazy oh some very good disruptors Flowers of dead marine bodies rising towards the top of the ocean. Now this drop, well, there's a lot of zealots in here. A lot of stalkers still left over. He will kill that natural nexus. Three more command centers on the way for Gumi. Gumi's feeling good, man. He's maxed out. He's adding mass command centers. I love it. I love that type of play. Okay. Where are we at right now with Trigger, right? He's lost his natural. He's lost a robo. He's got good upgrades. He's going to have 2-2, two -two, which is nice, right? And, it, like... So that'll be tied up, I guess, right? Gumio already has 2-2. Two -two. Gumio's really on top of things. My God. Double Robo being made. So Trigger, I think, looking at this and saying, okay, we need to play a, a much longer game for me to win. And so that's where the triple Robo is going to come in. Very, very useful. That being said, Gumio getting ready. Ooh, nice hit with the Fusion Core. Ooh, another nice hit. Uh, we should be seeing Liberator Range come out of Gumiho once again. And probably a lot of liberators dude these disruptors are hitting so much more than i'm used to at the pro level i feel like beyond would not have taken many losses there uh but kumi right now he is he's got so much he can't absorb a lot zal's trying to run up don't have much of a chance but you know the disruptor balls doing a great job has that overcharge keep everything alive oh dude he's hitting them every time Instructors for Trigger have an extra range, it feels like.
Hmm. All right, little counterattack here from Gumi. I don't see a single medevac here, so this is definitely a one-way journey for the, this Bioforce. Oh my god, he does force a cancel there, which is nice. Dodges that Disruptor Ball. Yeah, pretty good dodging. Continue to keep that pressure on, but, you know, having to stim a second time is going to make his army die very, very quickly at this point. Trigger? He's keeping it together, right? Like, he's not dead. He's got a lot of Disruptors. His gateway army's not that big. That is a lot of disruptors, though. And don't forget, disruptors now cost four supply instead of three. Right? That was a nerf that they had recently. So when we look at his army, supply is 81. You know, if he's got 10 disruptors, think of it as 71, right? Because that's what you're going to be used to as far as what the actual army size is. So I just want to throw that out there, right? This is, this is kind of a podunk army here from Trigger. Gumiho continues to stay super active on the map. He's taking more bases in here, keeping that pressure on. Oh, I actually completely dodges that disruptor shot. The flank from the right just killing it. Oh my god, his damage output here is absurd. But we do get some good disruptor shots. Trigger hits the shots he needs to not die. Oh, maybe not this time though. Yeah, sacrificing three of his disruptors there. You know, his his stalker's getting extra hits due to that, but that's not what you want. He he definitely overextended, should have pulled back there. His army was kind of fragmented on the two sides uh, here of the screen. And GG is called. is going to take it down. Really, really uh, very nice series between them. All right, one second, guys. Taking a look at the bracket. So we're almost the end of the tournament. Take a quick look. We have Gumio Clem in the semifinals. And we have Hero Wayne over here. We're checking on where Hero Wayne is. I believe they're in game number one right now, but we're going to check if that's coming along or not. Because uh, I would like to see Hero Wayne. Wayne's been doing a lot of upsets against the top Korean players. Okay, so we're going to jump into game number two of Hero vs. Wayne. Haven't seen a lot of PvZ on the new patch. Uh, and then um, if that ends quick, we'll jump into Clem Gumiho and just finish out the tournament. What? Barry cheered. X300, Detective W. Bush and Sergeant Sub-Zero took a moment to reflect. What the hell did they just do? Dr. Zayas knew 15 Kamehameha has directly into the moon had to be dangerous, but goddammit Bowser had to be stopped. If it damns humanity, so be it. I understand that. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind damning humanity if it means I can kill all the mosquitoes and flies in the world. Whatever happened to MC? MC plays Brood War right now. He's extremely good. He's extremely good. Um, also, he played that Legends match and fucking easied everybody in Gamers 8. <clears throat> Guy's a fucking legend. 
My voice is your announcer pack. Thank you. <laughs> MC has ASL level? Not quite. Not quite. There's a lot of StarCraft 2 guys that aren't quite ASL level, but they're like, they can beat the pros. They can. But MC's very good right now. Like, I've, I've hit him a couple times on the ladder, and dude, he's fucking strong. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, I don't know what Fruit Dealer does nowadays, honestly. All right. Hero versus Wayne. We're going into game number two. Alkion. Alki one. Alcyon. Alcyon. These guys just name maps in crazy ways nowadays. I do appreciate non-symmetric type of uh, maps like this where you have different looking battles on the two sides. Anyways, we have Wayne in the top right. We have Hero on the bottom left. They played a 17-minute game before this. Not sure what happened, but Hero was able to take him down. Wayne did beat Dark today, but I'm fairly certain Dark was playing Protoss, and it was a 2-1. But Wayne has been beating a lot of the top Korean players in these cups. He's, he's getting better and better. He's working really hard. He's showing up every single week, and he's like... Him and Gerald are kind of like these uh, underdog European players that are really improving themselves currently it's fun to watch <clears throat> so uh we're just gonna chill it's pvz so you have to wait for the cyber next score to finish talked about that a lot in the past there's not like a lot of um, variation until then. You got to kind of see what, what the Protoss wants to do. And it's almost always Stargate, but we'll see about that. Hero has multiple styles that he likes to play. Definitely makes it interesting. So the core is coming up. It's a little bit of mining harassment here from Hero. Trying to slow down some of those patches, but you know, accidentally takes the minerals, so that's basically done. So Chrono Boosting an Adept, but no Warp Gate. So we should be seeing the Stargate. There it is. And Warp Gate right afterwards. I mean, generally, this will just be uh, Oracle and oftentimes three Oracles. Occasionally, we see some interesting Void Ray type of plays. Uh, not sure if that's something that we're going to see here. <clears throat> Not sure exactly what that is. There's a lot of things in that map editor. So the third hatch is coming up. Stargate almost done. And there's that Oracle to start. But we'll see how deep he goes on the Stargate units. And if he wants anything to help clear overlords. Normally you just use a stalker and, and an Oracle to spot where the overlord's at. We don't see a stalker being made yet though. That could signal towards a Void Ray. Possibly even a Phoenix, although that's very unpopular. It's more popular to go for the Void Ray. A single Phoenix is about the dumbest thing <laughs> that you can come up with. All right, so going to try to shade up. And a beautiful last thing, a block there from Wayne. All right, cancels the shade. Two, three, hey, hey, four. 
Dude, that's deadly. Five? Wayne is cursing at his PC 100%. I don't know the guy, but he's cursing at his PC. That's rough. That's a lot of damage from the first two adepts. Like, two is, is where you're like, okay, we're fine. But now he's killed an additional three there with the Oracle. Ling's coming for a little bit of a counterattack. Eh. It's a good move. It's a good move from Wayne. Hero going to be fine, though, of course. He's not going to cancel that Nexus or anything. Third Oracle is about to pop. Twilight gets started. We don't see any additional flying units being made, so... Just kind of leaving the Overlord saying, fine, scout me. Doesn't matter. So the Oracle's coming up. A couple of Depths here as well. I'm not sure if the Depths are going to be able to find any damage realistically. He's going to cancel that. Not worth it. Oracle's flying up towards that main. I think at this point, this is more scouting than anything. I don't think he expects to really get damage. That was nice, though. That's a nice little stasis ward harass. Triple Oracle together now. Yeah, not really, not really finding any uh, any additional damage. So Wayne has really uh, tightened up his defense quite a bit, but you know, keeping three oracles alive—that's kind of a powerful thing here for for Hero. Gonna start flying home. Blinking plus one on the way. Uh, also a Robo. Now, are we going to see Hero's very mass Blink Stalker new mass expansion, or are we gonna see his more kind of updated way that he likes to play, where it's like, okay, we're gonna have Blink Stalker and maybe a little bit of pressure with it. But going into Colossus uh, with that as well. And then uh, expanding, but not as quickly as he used to. You know, there's been like so many different strategies that have come out of Hero in this matchup with these uh, Oracle into Blink openers. Oh, damn. Damn. See, this is where if I were Wayne, I would say, wow, LOL, nice race and leave the game. I'm like, wow, you're pretty good. You're pretty talented. He's like, I've won GSL, what do you want? But that's ridiculous. 13 drones there. Dude. Yeah, notice how he throws five gates down. What are you going to do as Wayne? What are you going to do? I, th I think this is... Like, if Wayne comes back, it's truly impressive. Now, he's getting Infestation Pit. That could be interesting. Um, Infestors now pop out with a fungal growth. So maybe that's what he wants to do is to prevent the blink so he can actually land some and kill. But it's just going to be tough. Look, he's at equal drones right now. They're equal supply and he's making roaches. So that's rough because roaches are not really worth to supply. You know, they're, they're, they're just, they don't scale that well. The stalker is going to be much, much better. Okay, Hydralisk uh, Den on the way. Okay, this is actually kind of becoming interesting, and he's actually going for a quick hive as opposed to, uh, you know, the the uh, infestors that I was suggesting there. So instead of trying to stop Blink, he may be rushing up in Hive, and specifically, I don't think it would be for Lurker. It could be for Lurker. Let's see if he throws down the Lurker Den. Lurkers do hard counter uh, Blink Stalkers in a lot of ways. And yeah, it is going to be that Lurker tech. Uh, and obviously, Hive unlocks the better Lurker upgrades. But you would imagine if you're going to Hive, it's specifically for the Viper. Right? That's that's what I would lean towards. All right, Hero. I'm going to start putting the heavy pressure on now. He knows that Wayne is already hurt. He just blinks forward. My god. Real control of this game right now. Look at this. He's not even microing. He's like, no, we're, this is over. <laughs> He's like, I already know the answer to this math problem, bro. I have more stalkers than you have. All right, loses the prism. Does any of it matter? Hero doesn't think so. 
Dude, I, I have never seen such a blatant lack of micro in my life. <laughs> he literally, he killed 13 drones, GG. Okay, so he killed 13 drones. And the thing is, he was like preparing all sorts of different possibilities for his follow-up. The 13 drones died, he immediately added five gates. Gets a couple warping rounds, walks forward, blinks on top of his opponent and just sits there. There wasn't targeting going on. There wasn't micro going on. Just says, fuck it. All right, so now we have here in the finals, Clem vs. Bion is the other semifinals. We'll be jumping into, I guess, game two. I think game one already started. <laughs> Why do you think guy in the chat? Why does that mail that PO boxing have a picture of Mario pretending to be a mailman? That was my attempt at using um, an AI to draw me a picture. I told him to make Mario as a mailman delivering a package, and that's what it gave me. I originally told it I was like make me Mario and Luigi doing it, but it just kept giving me two Marios. I used four credits trying to fucking get it to make what I wanted. Mail <laughs> row. Is there snow where you are? No. What? Fucking fall, bro. So yeah, we'll be going into uh, into the next game here, just as uh, they finish up. Gumio versus Clem. Sorry, I, I don't know. Why I said Beyond versus Clem. Clem beat Beyond in the previous round. It's Gumio versus Clem. We're going to tune in once again here. Just keep that on the background. I have something to watch. If you want, you can go over to Chicken Man SC. He's commentating this game right now. We'll be doing game number two. They're pretty far in, so I don't know if it'll be too, uh, too much longer.
Looks like Gumi might have a bit of an edge there. Yeah. Looks like he's got two factories already producing, which is kind of nice. But Clem's starting to add in the Vikings a little bit more, so... Kind of interesting. <laughs> Your houses have basements in PI. Some of them do. There's no bedrock on this island. This island is like basically sand. Uh, so you can't build buildings that are too high. There's like all the buildings are really short here. And um, yeah, it's you don't really go deep underground for anything. Deckard. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Dirty Deckard. And there you have it. Just visited beautiful island, but how the hell do you afford to live there? Everything is expensive. What are you talking about? What, truly, what are you talking about? I know that, like, for instance, grocery prices might be just slightly higher than the mainland. But it's not, it's not, like, particularly expensive. I don't know, man. I lived in Seoul for the last 15 years. This is not more expensive than there. <laughs> and I know, like, housing prices and stuff are a lot cheaper than somewhere like Toronto, so... How much is a new construction 2K square feet? I don't know, dude. Go look it up. But it's way cheaper than like Toronto or something, trust me. Yeah, New Brunswick is cheaper than PEI. Like Nova Scotia in New Brunswick in a similarly populated area to where I live would be cheaper than where I live. But that's okay. I like living here. It's near my wife's family. Good for the kids. New Brunswick sucks. Well, it's kind of boring, but at least you have Costco. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why people are trying to argue with me. No, guy in the chat. Yeah, not not that not too unlike Maine. Honestly, where I live kind of reminds me of where I grew up. It's kind of nice. Good place to raise kids, really. What? ST4 and Kai Hanglo cheered. X300 RT its mommy in law. I'm so glad you live closer now. It's nice to see your kids and my daughter on a regular basis. Hey, oh, so I don't think this is true. It's oh, nice mow to see you this time. It's a vegetable How would you heart. like some of these nuts? Ah, these nuts. Got him. Aha. Uh -huh. Oops. I drop my staff. Bends over and Horadric Cube opens before you. Stay a while in this position. Ah, dirty Deckard. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so again, guys, don't forget you can go check out Chicken Man's stream. Chicken Man SC. Oh, my head's in the way. I can't even see it. See? There it is. Chicken Man SC. He's commentating this right now. Hide down here.
<laughs> you fell now. You can't go to Canada. Sorry, guy. Guy in the chat. My stream just got 90% better. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to, to <laughs> like Moduck, uh, see people say like, oh, you know, it's, it's like quiet there. There's not much there. Some people are into that. I think it's like, uh, an age and priority thing. Like I really liked living in Seoul for a long time after living in New Hampshire for 25 years. I lived in Seoul for about 20, 15 years. Uh, and like it was it was very welcome to be somewhere where things were happening and shit. But now I'm, you know, like fucking 40 and have four kids and I'm married and I like the quietness of this. This is amazing. Raise my kids in a nice, friendly, safe environment and uh, plenty of room and stuff. I was in suburban New Hampshire, not the boonies. All right, we got it. Good job, chicken man. Keeping us apprised as to what was occurring. People that grow up in New Hampshire don't have an accent. What the fuck? No, I had, I did have an accent. Uh, before, but I got rid of it when I moved. Hey, to Korea. chat! It's Dirty David again. If you're just tuning in, I managed to submerge myself between Prince Edward Island and the Continental Shelf. <laughs> I've a suit with plenty of protections aside from my crouch area. I'm currently digging out the sand beneath RT's house with my penis. <laughs> he wouldn't realize it for three weeks, but it'll be nasty. I'm fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah, Fulminata's from New Hampshire as well. That's right. What's up, man? Good to see you. Yeah, I lived in the town closest to to Boston, so we had a little bit more of an accent there. And the accent gets a little bit different up north. But, uh... How'd you get rid of your accent? Accents are very easy to, to change. It's like... You can just be very flexible with it and talk more like people that you're around. It's a pretty high-tier New England state. Yeah, I guess it's... Top two, probably. Maybe top three. Maybe Connecticut and Vermont are better. All right, we're going to go into the next game here, guys. <laughs> Dude, I can't even do an impression of my old accent. Okay. What? Dom Defense donated $3.33. Hey, Artie, love you casting SC2 game. Thank you. Your knowledge is really impressive for a diamond player. <laughs> you know what they say, if you can't oh. make it, cast it. Love the YouTube channel too. But why are you doing dumb faces again? You stopped on the Brood War 1. Uh, Front that's... facing baby chick. <laughs> thank Front you, facing thank you. baby chick. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Mapu's actually running it. But that can be a really good way to jumpstart the channel, I think. And Stanky, I didn't know that... You are from the New England area, but you said mass holes, so clearly you are. Because that's what we called them. That's what my... <laughs> it's like when they're driving on the road. Fucking mass hole cutting me off. Damn those mass holes. See? Fulminata knows. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, that's what people in New Hampshire call people from Massachusetts. Especially where I live, because where I live was uh, is Salem, New Hampshire. And it's like a strip mall town. There's just malls everywhere and stuff. More than the town can support. Because everyone drives over the border because it's tax free, and so and they they are just strictly worse driver than New Hampshire people, so they'd be called mass holes all the time. So yeah, <laughs> all right, we are in the next game, and they're both doing one proxy racks. Gumio's proxy racks is a little bit closer, and uh... <laughs> oh, Pittsburgh. Okay, 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 close enough. All right, he's actually lifting the barracks into the main base. This is crazy, man. <laughs> I can't believe Gumi's lifting his racks and he is up 1-0 on Clem. Oh my God, he's getting an add-on. Oh my God, he's getting an add-on. But you know what? He's going to get scouted. He is going to get scouted here. That Reaper from Clem is rallied to go out of his base. I can't believe he's even trying this. I haven't seen this in so long. Gumio's a psycho. Dude, he's trying to go concussive shells in the main base of Clem. Who does this? <gasps> the Reaper didn't go down here. The way he had it rallied, I thought it was going to. Oh, can you not jump up there because of the minerals? I thought there's a spot there. Dude, I can't believe this. I cannot believe what I'm looking at right now. 
This is absolutely wild. Who puts a barracks in their opponent's base with a tech lab? What is this, seven years ago? Okay, the Reapers are coming up and Clem is doing so much damage. He's probably like, what the hell is going on in this game? But hold the phone. There's a Cyclone on the way. So Gumi's gonna hold it. Look at how many SCVs Gumi pulls, by the way. I think he's the best at dealing with uh, proxy Reapers of anyone. Now, here we go. Let's see what he can get done. Dude, this is serious. You're gonna have to pull a lot of SCVs. But you know what? If you pull enough SCVs, I think you're okay here, right? You can just kind of surround them. Now, that's poor surface area, but you still have the surface area. Gumi killing more workers than the Reapers killed at his base so far. Dude, seven to three? Well, I guess there was another three killed off too. Okay, so I think that rush is over. And a proxy starport on top of that. That probably will end up being a liberator. I could see him going Banshee though. That's a possibility. Imagine if he makes a medevac. How wild would that be? Okay, so it is gonna end up being Banshee instead. Sometimes proxy liberators can be really, really good in the matchup, but I guess since he already has a Cyclone, it doesn't make too much sense. Okay, so Clem gonna go ahead and expand. Gumiho with his absolutely ballsy build, floating his barracks back home, making multiple Cyclones at the moment, bringing that Scout SCV back, or no, not Scout SCV, proxy SCV. Cyclone comes out to end the barracks, so that's kind of annoying, but at least that will draw the Cyclones away from the proxy location. And with his own Cyclones on top of the ramp, I think he's just totally fine, right? All right, so Stim on the way. Dude, the Cloaked Banshees, if he waits for two and goes, it's going to be so deadly. But Clem getting up here has the double uh, Reaper. Okay, deals with it reasonably quickly, loses three more workers. So Gumio is down in workers now, despite his absolutely crazy Marauder rush. And Gumio is waiting for the two. Now, I think when he flies in with these two, he's going to kill about uh, all the SCVs. It's going to be insane. He's going to get 12 plus. You watch. He's going to absolutely devastate Clem with these two Banshees. I don't think that these Banshees are something that Clem is anticipating at all at this point. Now, he has a ton of anti-air, as you see. In fact, I wonder... No. Gumio's making siege tanks, so I think he's... Look at this. One on high ground. He's going to have a second before Clem can move in. So Clem is going to have to bring his units up to deal with the Banshees. Now, he does move one up automatically. I think he's starting to feel that something's amiss. Good spot to put it. But you can cloak and fly over. Like, if he catches on really quick... Oh, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Cloak. There you go. Did Clem see? He did see. Okay, he's going to take down... Oh, dude, that dies so quick now. Holy crap. They did lose health uh, in the in this patch. So, five already. Six. I said 12. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. More than that, dude. Holy crap. Clem's doing the counterattack and it's not going to work. Gumio's going to take him down. Clem has won a lot of cups lately. He's been deadly as hell. But I don't think that this is enough. This marine drop, this is not going to bring him back. Dude, he is getting absolutely destroyed. Okay, he has stim. He has stim. But between siege tanks plus the cyclones, the based Gumi god has got this one. The old cyclone would have killed that. <laughs> Three banshees coming back home. I don't even know why he'd bring him back home. Like, he doesn't need them defensively. You may as well fly around and look for damage. All right, third command center going up for Gumi. He is up by six workers, seven workers right now. Dude, Clem is super dead. Look at this, another Banshee coming in the side. How many Banshees are we going to be making this game?
Yeah, I think this last this is the last stitch from Clem. He's gonna GG and go to bed. Cause this is yeah, he's just he's losing so much. Look at this 10 SCVs across. GG is called Gumio with the two to zero. Damn Gumi. Maru says Gumi is the best TBT. That's sick. So that means we're going to the finals. We're going to the finals. It's going to be a best of five between based Gumi God and hero. Damn. What a day. Guys, uh, don't forget to use the command StarCraft 2. You can follow the new YouTube channel for all the StarCraft 2 games. RT, what is the hourly StarCraft 2 pro play? It's like, if you get really, 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 really good, it's probably about 12 cents an hour for the amount of time you put in. One sec, guys. Yeah, the thing is, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of hours to, uh, you know, to, to get into a place where you can actually make any money playing StarCraft. It's crazy. So if you look over the years, it's like, wow, they make so much money. It's like, most of them don't. <laughs> okay, Sarah's won like a million dollars. Okay, that he makes a lot. But if you go down one step from him, and look at the amount of time put in. Holy shit. Excuse me. All right.
What's up, man? Good to see you, buddy. Had a little throwback. We saw a Battlecruiser game from Gumiho, and I was talking about that when you started that meta for one week. <laughs> oh. Good times. All right, we're getting into the finals, guys. It's going to be best of five. I noticed you guy in the chat. Well, on um, Ride Who Set Station, man, Battlecruiser's the right play for, for TVP. That map is fucking impossible to attack on. What a silly, silly map that is. Oh, we're starting on it. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. All right, guys, are you ready for some Battlecruiser action? Seriously. Here we go. Oh. False start. <laughs> Rebuilding their tech and cyber cores at the corner bases. I love it. I'm ready to have a good time, but don't want to get carried away. Okay. We'll try not to go too hard here. The finals, best of five, starting now. All right, here we go. In the top right, we have Hero. In the bottom right, bottom left, we have Gumio. I can't tell my my directions apart. Okay, we're on Ride Who's Set Station, guys. Uh, this map is the most turtly map that I've seen in years and years and years. Um, it's like basically four bases completely for free. You have one defensive location that can be walked to, right? And it's up a ramp. And that'll hold your first three bases. Then you move two millimeters and you have your fourth base. So, like this map, it seems like no one can kill each other ever. Uh, you know, it, we've we've seen a couple TVPs here tonight. I think Riser had a really great idea where he actually did a Tempest Rush here with a quick mothership. It was sick. I think it was really well done. I think builds like that could actually evolve on this map to be normal. Uh, we also saw Trigger play here against Gumiho earlier. A uh, trigger did end up beating Gumiho, but it was close, and it felt like Gumiho might have been outplaying him for a, a big portion of the game. But it did turn into Battle Cruiser versus Carrier, which was fun. Now Gumiho, once again, just like he did against Trigger, goes for uh, you know the the command center first, so that's a very greedy opener. But again, the map is so gigantic, you can get away with things like this very oftentimes. Now. Uh, last time, Gumio went double racks with this command center first and did try to do a double drop. So it was kind of like a two-on-one. Command center first into two-on-one, which, I mean, that fits well with command center first anyway, so I don't mind that as the opener. Uh, but I don't think you can expect it to necessarily do damage. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe Hero gets too greedy. But the thing is, as long as you're kind of sitting in your base and just consistently making some units... It feels like you should be able to hold on against everything. Heroes scouting for any sort of cheese. You know, I think he has to has to be looking at this and saying, well, this has to be Protoss favor this map. And I really, really, really think it is. <laughs> uh, PVZ, I almost don't even want to see here because I'm like, well, that will never end. That's a 45 minute game every game. But uh, for, for TVP, it's really interesting to me because it's hard to get into games where no one can kill each other. You know, it, which actually, in my opinion, makes TVP. I've been saying this for probably eight months, nine months, something like that. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, I It might be a year now that I've been thinking that TVP might be the best matchup in the game right now. Uh, it's just, it's really dynamic. There's a lot of builds. It's very back and forth. Really feels like both sides can win. So that's like a good thing. But that's what makes this map kind of fun for this matchup is it's not like that. Right? This map is like, well, you can't kill each other. There's like no way to do it. So it's just something completely different from all the other different TVPs that you see. 
But yeah, I do think it's a great matchup at the moment. Now, Kumio is doing a different build than what he showed us earlier in his TVP against Trigger. He's going for three barracks play as opposed to the like more two on one type of play. I'm fairly certain that's what happened. I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm trying to remember perfectly as to exactly what the opening build was, but I'm, I'm fairly sure that's the case. Hallucinate Oracle going across the map for a bit of a scout. Three gate blink from Hero. Hasn't mined out the, or hasn't started mining out the uh, minerals at his uh, third base location. Flies the Oracle in, flies the Oracle out. I think Kumio knows that this is not a real Oracle. Mirrors it a little bit. It sees everything, right? The factory, it sees the eBay. You know, nothing, nothing here is left unscouted. Robo coming up and throwing maybe a pylon down over here, but I feel like it's time for him to start mining those minerals slowly but surely and just produce a few units. Like, with what he just scouted, there's no way I would go attack, right? You're playing against a command center first opener. Your opponent's going to have a lot of Marines with Stim and Medivacs. He is making the Prism because he's hero, so he'll probably just attack anyways. Now, uh, it looks like Colossus Tech coming up. Prism almost done. Oh my god, four sentries. What are we doing with four sentries here? Okay, so Adept in three stalkers <laughs> in this prism. Interesting. Oh my god. Well... That was a cool moment, I guess. Now, here's the thing. If this was a normal map, I would be like, wow, Hero might just die. He won't. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. He's not going to die. He, like, it's a shit position. But, like, if he just sits at home, he won't die. Okay, he sees two medivacs coming out. Okay, catch these, then blink away. This is exactly... Oh, dude. Gumio doesn't expect him to be out here because he shouldn't be. Isn't that a funny thing? By playing wrong as Protoss, you can gain an edge. It's so sick. It's like you lose everything, and then you're like, well, I need to be out in the map with these stalkers. Wait, does everything take damage at the same time? What is this attack up? Holy crap. Things going wrong right now. Trying to get rid of that overcharge does so. Guess he will end up holding it here. Hold on. If you attack a rock, does it hurt all of them? Yeah. Dude, I had no idea about this. Mapu didn't know either. Mapu, you're a professional observer. You should know this, Mapu. Um, yeah, that's that's wild. I actually had no idea about that. That's the first time I've seen anyone attack those rocks. So that's that's really interesting. Actually, I'm trying to trying to think how that that alters my view of the map. Anyways, uh, he is working on those rocks at least. You got to get through the minerals as well though. Once those are gone, uh, the third nexus is started, but it's at the general what is generally the fourth base location. So, well, I mean, a, a scan goes down. You know, I, I, Gumio will continue to keep pressure on. He's got so many situations already in this game where he gained edges. And now he's going to be able to force a cancel here, I think. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Never mind. That army was very, very close. But yeah, it, it's, it's funny because Hero is like 30 supply down right now. Gumio's up on workers. He's up on army. He's up on upgrades. He's up on tech. He's up on everything. But Hero's completely fine because you can't kill anyone on this map. I wonder if Gumio will just continually apply pressure and try to kill him, though. I could see that, and maybe this time it could work.
Gumio taking his fourth. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think this is where you really have to get your upgrades going. Right? Well, I mean, we already have one one, but like for for Hero, even though it feels like he's a little bit behind everything, add a second forge. Just do it. If you're going to make gateway units, get two forges going. Double liberator being produced, maybe for some harassment. Armory is coming up with a second eBay, so Gumio definitely wants to get those upgrades. Yeah, Psy Storm coming up. You know, I could see him trying to get some Psy Storm drops off, makes some sense. You know, with that, that natural being kind of King Sejong Station esque, that was where Psy Storm drops really kind of started being utilized in StarCraft 2, anyways. So maybe that's a great location to try that on. It's really weird looking. Yeah, 10 minerals per patch. Just drop two mules, man. You got it. <laughs> All right, Gumio boosting out to the side and just letting some units out. So this might be like a... Wait, wait. Is he like going after that stalker? Is all this a giant... Like, that was him trying to get the Stalker. He stimmed everything to try to get the Stalker that was on the, the Watchtower. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Huh. Like, that seems like you're over-dedicating to that. Okay, so... Uh, air Weapons finally started here for Hero. And Air Weapons finally started for Gumio as well. Double Starport coming up. So this is what we've been waiting for. Fusion Core should... Yep, there it is. Uh, Gumio is going to go into battle cruisers almost certainly. Like I could see him getting liberator range. He could get that first and then go Yamato, uh, you know, and, and battle cruiser. But I do think that this is a battle cruiser map. I do think that this is a carrier and tempest map, and definitely a mothership map. Dude, honestly, here's 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 a real take. Okay, everyone has used mothership wrong forever. Mothership should just be used for recall. Get Rex out. Uh, <laughs> that Zealot was a Brood War fan. That's why <laughs> StarCraft II Zealots took him out. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I, I think if you, I've always wanted to just see people utilize it for recalls specifically. Now, five command centers coming up. Gumio massing up his commands. Mass Stargate's coming. It's funny because we have all that back and forth in the early game and it's pointless almost. Not exactly pointless. Okay. Like, you should be testing and making sure that your opponent is being too greedy and then you could maybe injure them. But even with how much Hero screwed up and lost in the early game, it had no impact. Here we are, they're both gonna max out with the, with the worker count that they want, mass upgrades, mass air. That's just what this map is. So yeah, I feel like, again, big shout out to Riser who was playing earlier today for his more innovative play on this map, which I think stuff like that can evolve uh, and actually be good. Maybe not exactly his build, but the ideas behind it. Fleet Beacon coming up. Double Oracle. The Oracle's going to be for tags and stasis wards. Gumio really sucking the minerals out of this map right now. Mass mules. Little bio force in that bottom right, just denying an additional base. Gumio actually expanding uh, super quick for Terran here. More than Hero, right? Hero still hasn't taken that back expand, which is kind of funny. Expanding out onto the map. I think he probably tried to, you know, he is a Protoss player. He probably tried to tell a Nexus to build over those two little mineral patches that block it. And he's like, wow, you can't build a Nexus there? That's, oh, that's weird. He just went elsewhere. So battle cruisers starting to pop out. A little bit of Zot harassment, honestly, not that impactful. Four hallucinated phoenixes going for a scout. More stargates, more starports. Oh yeah.
Dude, this is getting a little bit wild. You can see the arms race really beginning as far as their production and command center or versus Nexus counts go. Like all these upgrades being made as well. I like, and this is what I like about a game like this is these little skirmishes that you have at the same time. It's like you're both being greedy, but you're both poking each other too. It's not the most impactful pokes, but it's like, yeah, I'm trying to slice storm your army, but yeah, I'm trying to gain a little value here and there. And of course you should be. By the way, look at Gumio's bank. 4.5K, 1.6K. Mules, my man. Pretty good. The battle cruiser's gonna start their harassment. That's so funny. He scans her, he's like, what? <laughs> you never expanded there? What is this? All right, Carrie's gonna go after these medevacs. Okay, he'll lose those. Not a huge deal. Little bit of harassment here. You know, as long as you're careful, you're gonna save your BCs. Just Yamato's and warp out. He tried to overcharge. He knew what was coming. <laughs> okay, so he's gonna hide him in bottom right. I like this move. I like it very much. He did this against Trigger as well, where he didn't just put two there, but he ended up sending more there and then waited for some sign of the Protoss player elsewhere and then attacked. Definitely a good move. And yes, for those of you watching uh, that are Brood War fans, uh, they can teleport anywhere on the map. There is no range to it. You don't need vision. You just send where you want them. Now, this is a normal move, uh, attacking your own units. Like, these robo units do almost nothing at this point in the game. Hero just wants to make more and more and more flying units. Oh, I think that's the new medevac upgrade, by the way. Fairly certain. So that's cool. Uh, quicker recharge on medevacs. May as well get it. This is a great sacrifice, too. Send a prism in with your two immortals. Just target down some buildings. This is actually... Here's a quick little blast from the past story. Uh, this is something that Grubby used to do in PvZ that I was a big fan of. That I thought he was really, really smart for doing. Because it would always turn into Broodlord games, and you'd always want to get rid of your immortals. So a lot of people would, like, just kill their own immortals or send the immortals into, like, the front of the Zerg to just die. But Grubby would always load him up into a quick prism and drop him off and do things like try to kill the Greater Spire, right? He'd try to target down a building because they deal so much damage to that. And I always thought that that was a really smart way to do it. And we just saw a hero do it there, you know, 10 years after Grubby was doing it. <laughs> Not that we've never seen anyone else do it, but I do, I think it's a, it's the way it should be done. It's the way it should be done. You should try to sacrifice them for some real value. Okay, did he just beam those to the bottom right? I'm not entirely sure. Oh! Beams them into the battle. Gets a couple of uh, couple of nice Yamatos off. The Biofor is going to rip through this now. Two very injured Colossi. Not going to be able to guard that very well. Yeah, so he's going to be able to take this out. He has been mining through these minerals a little bit. So this base that Hero neglected taking may become a bit harder to take as Gumiho clears out a path for his ground force. Dude, what a crazy game one. Of course, I think this is the only map that we'll see that will look anything like this. The rest of the map pool, very, very different. It's actually one of the more diverse map pools we've had in StarCraft 2 for quite some time. We had five carriers at a time. Jeez. The stasis word is being thrown down everywhere. Love to see it. I like the landed Vikings dying to carriers. There's some sort of uh, justice in that. BC's launching in, but he is going to hit a recall. Oh, no. Getting stuck. Going to at least trade a little bit there. Shield battery kind of keeping everything alive. So the BC is going to be wasted pretty quickly. Their upgrade's getting pretty absurd. 3-1 air right now against 2-2. Two, two. Definitely do have to be getting those armor upgrades. Very, very important on both sides. All right, nukes now as well. I love it. That's kind of a cute nuke. You're not going to find that one. That's not a spot you would think of. Carrier's doing some good damage. Oh, he found it. Sick. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just, it's such an odd location to nuke right now, but yeah. Nice sneaky maneuver there from Gumiho, but here with some very good awareness. Archon Carrier High Templar. I feel like I'm watching BGH at the moment. What a composition. Moves forward, gets Yamato a bit, but of course the damage output of carriers can be pretty absurd. The Archon running forward to try to get some damage there as well. Force back a little bit. A few Vikings being added in here from Gumiho. Gumiho's standing army, not that large right now. Okay, oh man, beams forward with his new BCs, and he's going to be able to eliminate all of these carriers. Now, that being said, we have a bunch of Zealots running in, so there might be some damage that gets dealt to his actual base. He's trying to target these down. He's not actually focused firing that much. Oh, some more carriers flanked from the other side. Dude, we have a box art fight going on. I love the Marauder down there watching. Single Ghost as well. Some Stalkers coming in. Uh-oh, I hope he's making some bio to help deal with these Stalkers. The Stalkers actually could be a little bit of a problem as they blink up and are going to be able to take out the uh, Vikings really efficiently here. And in fact, can easily kill that, that Battlecruiser as well. Uh-oh. Hero's very low on supply, though. The Triple Observer, making sure you can see even Triple Cloak Ghosts. More Battlecruisers coming out. Gumio does not care about ground units. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I have a ton of Vikings and Battlecruisers. We are fine. There are some Marauders, Medivacs, and Marines being made. Dude, he has so many starports at this point. Huge, huge air production. And you know what? He's got 3-3 three, three on his bio. So honestly, the bio force, I feel like Gumiho can run around real quick and clean up like one to two bases of Hero. And honestly, killing even one base here might kill Hero. Hero's economy is very, very weak. His bank is very, very small. I think he's going to be in a bit of trouble here. I think Gumio is... is Look at that. Gumio just scanned the whole map, man. How is that even fair? Wild. I'm going to finish up this level 3 air armor. Really important for the observers still in his army. They take one more marine hit to die. Okay, DT's blinking in that main base. Gumio just running around the map now. He's going to be able to clear out quite a bit. Definitely feel like, feels like Gumio has a better take on this map than what we've seen from Hero here. But this is the type of game that you're going to play as Hero and be like, okay, if I play this again, my play is going to look completely different. Gumio just going to be finishing him off here shortly. All right, the landed Vikings and bio army here. Storms come out, and it should not be enough still. Those are some pretty damn good storms, though. Some more zealots charging up. Those Vikings with their 3-2 upgrades doing a pretty darn good job of fighting ground units as well. And now a serious ground army comes in. Lots of size storms in here. Dude, that's... <laughs> He is really storming the hell out of this, but now Battlecruiser is joining the fray as well. Definitely, I can notice uh, the medevacs having energy much more than they should right now, by the way. Definitely a good upgrade for the late game. But uh, quite the battle there from Hero. Some great storms and everything. Turns them into Archons. Going to try and attack. And unzip my jacket, man. It's getting hot in here watching this game. Battlecruiser's trying to fight. Ooh, nice pullback and warp away. All right, the stalkers do force those away as well. A lot of battlecruisers actually hitting that bottom right, but look at this. The Archon Stalker. <laughs> Planetary Killer Force. SCVs all being transferred down. Dude, they're both going to get very low as far as banks go. But Gumio just has so much more supply right now. It's just a, a pretty mobile supply here for, uh, for Hero. So he is able to run around and do some damage.
Yeah. I think Gumiho is finishing him off at this point. Loses a BC there as he warps in on top of the Archons. But look at that army. You're not going to be able to stop that with any of the bio forces that uh, Hero is really able to muster right now, I don't think. You have to get some good disruptor shots. Have a real shot there. Kind of assuming that he was going to see an observer there. Nope. He's just blindly running around the map. I see MPs taking out those Archons quickly. Man, going to be hard to land this splash damage. Ooh. Yeah. So, we should be seeing GG. Hero literally doesn't have anything left at this point. Trying to pull it together, but we're 25 minutes in. It's lunchtime in Korea. I think it's time to pack this one in and go to game number two. It's a good attempt at a little Zelok counterattack here. That is a huge portion of his economy, but finally, GG. Kumio takes game number one. Woo. Okay. Crazy first game. Oh, thank God the finals. SC two day. Look at the chatter, Rotus. Everyone's balls are entirely down. Mine were scraping the pavement as I walked today in anticipation of the SC two stream. I was like a. Is that what you were like? My balls. <laughs> and my balls will rise like phoenixes and shine bright like the diamonds they are. Blaze bright and eternal my diamond phoenix balls. Eh? You guys think AI will take over one day? The guys in the chat will take it down. They'll be in actually in charge of the AI. You see what they can do to these voices? All right, we're going into game number two here in the finals of this best of five. It's going to be Hero vs. Kumiho. Alcyon, or however you say it. So we have Gumio in the top right, we have Hero in the bottom left. And, well, uh, definitely not going to see another game like we saw that previous one. Right, who's at station just plays so, so differently. And uh, yeah, I, I'm expecting more of a normal game, but honestly, I'm excited to see what Gumiho might have planned. Uh, I want, I mean, if someone's gonna make the new Cyclone work in some sort of mech build against Protoss, it's obviously Gumiho's at the forefront of that list of players that could make that happen. I would love to see it. I would just love to see it. But his standard bioplay is very strong right now, too. Hope you guys are enjoying the StarCraft 2 here tonight. Have some uh, crazy games tonight, for sure. Much because of that map. And of course, this is a best of five here in the finals. Ooh, okay, Hero gonna be going for the cheese. He's got double gas in his main, Cybernex Core on the way, Zalot being made. And he is gonna proxy something. Gateway or I think Stargate. That's my guess, is Stargate here. The Reaper gonna scout that very, very quickly. Now, just cause you scout it doesn't mean you're gonna stop the Stargate. One thing I want to mention I was talking about this with no regret when the patch notes came out. I think Void Ray all-ins are going to be very, very strong. Uh, Tempest all-ins as well, right? And the reasoning behind that is uh, the changes on the Cyclone, they can't be locked on as far away. And without Magfield accelerators, they don't power down these units that quickly. So something like a shield battery, battery of shield batteries, uh, is going to be able to heal that up very, very well. 
So see how he throws that down. You I like think what we're gonna see is an all in here. Their early work was a little too new way for my taste. What is this? But when sports came out in eighty, we're gonna pause these after I this think one. They really came into their own, commercially and artistically. The whole album has a clear, crisp sound and a new sheen of consummate professionalism that really gives the songs a big boost. He's been compared to Elvis Costello, but I think Huey has a far more bitter, cynical sense of humor. In the 87, Huey released this for their most accomplished album. All right. <laughs> Thank you, SD4 and Kai Hanglow. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll pause the donuts after the game. And um, well, let's uh, let's see this Void Ray all in. You know, I think you have to go Vikings against this. I don't think that the Cyclone, the new Cyclone is going to be strong enough. I'm happy to see Hero trying this out because I knew someone was going to going to have to lead the charge. I actually I made the joke that DreamHack uh, Atlanta, it's going to be Haas's return to the top because <laughs> uh, that Cyclone really is how you hold this type of build, right? We still see this build sometimes work against the older Cyclone, but here you are and it's like, well, you don't really have great damage against this at all. Now, here's the thing. This is not a heavy all-in from Hero. He's actually making a Nexus behind. He's not focusing on getting a lot of shield batteries. Mm, good micro. Good micro. Look at how quick he kills that. Holy crap. But you need the shield batteries here, too. Third Void on the way. He certainly has slowed Gumiho down a little bit. I am a little bit sad, though, that this was not a dedicated all-in with, with shield batteries and everything and maybe warping in some gateway units, that type of thing. We've definitely seen that before. How useful. Yeah, he sees he's still making it, so he lifts off that command center. So Gumio is actually a little bit more afraid than maybe he has to be. But how useful. Here's the, here's the problem. How useful will those three void rays be? as the game goes on, right? If you don't use them now, Void Rays are a poor scaling unit in this matchup. They're strong at the very beginning, but they get very, very weak as Terran supply grows. You know, it's like a Roach or an Adept, you know, those types of things. Uh, the old Cyclone, right? There's Hellions, Reapers, those types of things. Now, he's trying to do something here, but this doesn't feel like it's been that good so far. One of the Voids going to die, it looks like. Ooh, yep, gets it. Turns on the voids. No, he's just taking massive damage. Nothing's working. Targets the wrong void, unfortunately. He could have killed that other one if he had targeted it correctly. It's going to be out with a little bit of a mistake. But the army that Hero has right now is really garbagey. This is a pretty weak army that we're looking at. Some nice moves, right? Like, this is this is good. These Adepts are not going to be that useful, so buy some time. Maybe a little bit of damage as well. Do they get out? They actually got all the way out? Wow. Good on them. Goes down. Unpowers this. Hero gets pretty heavily supply blocked, unfortunately. He is adding gates and going charge. Hero right now needs Gumi to throw an army away. Because Gumi's army is just going to be looking so much stronger. Much higher quality units, much higher quality tech. Robo coming up right now for uh, for Hero. Still trying to harass with these two adepts. Ooh. Getting some kills. <laughs> Gotta hand it to him, right? Look at that. Legit. These two very hurt adepts killing everything, man. But look at this push. Look how crappy that army is, I told you. He has charge, so he's gonna come out with the zealots. Maybe, maybe this was a little bit too quick of an attack from Gumi. As I said, Hero needs Gumiho to throw away an army, and that is exactly what we see here from Gumiho. You know, when your opponent has this type of army, you need to outscale it. You need to macro a little bit longer. And as you hit the critical mass, the charge lots aren't going to connect as well. The void rays are going to be, you know, doing very weak damage. This is unfortunate for Gumiho because he had a pretty good advantage this game. Pretty darn good advantage. 
he had waited another two minutes and then attacked, I don't think there's any way on earth Hero could have held him. But now, Hero has twice the army supply. Gumio is turtling up super heavily. I think he can probably live through the counterattack. Maybe Hero throws the army right back. <laughs> but it's also a little bit hard to get out of Hero's position. So this makes more sense than, more sense than Gumio's attack. But Gumio holds it pretty easily. But yeah, to macro out of Hero's position, right? He has no forges, no upgrades going, right? He needs splash damage, but he also needs more utility units rather than zealots. So like what he needs right now is the blink upgrade and like three colossi. <laughs> and that's really hard to get to right now. Just now starts that third nexus. Okay, storm instead of colossi going to be going towards storm. That's reasonable. The colossi are a bit expensive right now. Gumio making his third command center. Yeah, we have that blink just now starting. There's that forge, right? So he's getting into splash. He's getting into blink. He's getting into upgrades. But again, it's going to take a while for all that to occur. Gumio, of course, recovering pretty easily through this time. They're holding that counterattack from Hero. Ooh, seven probes. I actually was not even paying attention. I was kind of looking elsewhere on the minimap. I was looking at what Hero's doing over in his natural. Hero definitely doing something over there as well. Oh no. Okay, so 10 probes against 12 SCVs dead. Ooh, another couple. Very, very nice. Oh man. Well, F2 is a great, it's a great thing, isn't it? I tell ya. Best Protoss players in the world using F2. Oh my god, 19 probes now. Dude, a lot of things have gone wrong for Hero at this point. Wow, they've actually lost a very similar amount of workers. That's kind of surprising. All right, mostly charge here. Throws down a storm, a reasonable storm for sure. Good kiting from Gumiho. He is starting to lose his army. Looking a bit better here. For hero. So he attacks into that. Another mind drop. Oh my god. Even more probes going down. Yeah, I'm going to force a lift there pretty easily. Oh my god. The amount of probes going down is insane. At this point, hero may just try to push for the kill. It kind of thinks that would make the most sense. A nice storm goes down, charging forward, pushes everything back with the other storm. No bunkers here anymore. Throws down another storm on those SCVs and Marauders, but he's losing his Zealots, which means the rallied units are going to have a great uh, time here hitting into the Stalkers instead. Killing a lot of these SCVs. Oh, man. Only four Stalkers, two Zealots left. He is making an Archon. There's more units pop out for Gumio. I think Gumio's just going to... Oh, man, it's actually so close right now. Throws his mind, but it gets picked off. And the Zealots may just overwhelm Gumiho at this point. Insane game right now. SCV counts getting so low. Gumiho does GG despite the fact he still has mines going off. I don't know what to say about that game. That game was madness. Okay, I got to refill my water. I'll be back one second.
All right. Barry cheered. X300, Artie, what if you went to Baker's Square to get a bowl of spaghetti, but like the waitress brings your plate and it's pasta with the features and likeness of Betty White, and suddenly she, Betty White Spaghetti, looks directly at you and says shut up Artosis I'm Spaghetti White and I'm here to fuck your world up, what would you do? I'm spaghetti. Take a bite of spaghetti Betty. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be delicious. Save, if you want to turn with mommy, I will stay up all night if I have to. I love poggies. Mommy loves poggies. If you want mommy, fa! Yeah! Yeah! Ah! Yeah! Ah! <sighs> Fuck! <sighs> God, poggies for mommy. Oh, oh, ah, ah, ah. What are uh, poggies? Uh, uh, Ah, 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 ah. Oh. I see. Makes more sense now. Does my wife think of these donos? You can you can ask her. She comes down and joins on the mic more and more often. I have additional uh, mics set up now so she can just uh, come down and join. She thinks you guys are fucking weird. That's for sure. But she also likes to troll me, so like I think she's actually more like you than she wants to admit. But can she prove anything? <laughs> prove what? What does she need to prove? You guys are definitely fucking weird. I don't want you to get drunk. All right, last That's one. A very expensive plastic bottle of Bacardi. We're gonna You're pause the donos the after this. There. It isn't poisoned. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, St. Foreign Kai. All right, we're going into game number three, tied up one right now, one to one. Oh, we have steadfast versus hero. That's sick. That's fucking sick. That was a good job right there. One oh steadfast. It's one one one. <laughs> no, heroes one and two though. Yeah. All right, let's do it. I don't know how we we solve this one. All right, getting into it again. Even in a TVP final, Zerg wins. Solaris! All right, bottom left, we have Hero. Insta probe out. Insta probe. And in the top right, we have Gumiho. All right, the Insta Probe. There's two things this can be. It can be a Max Packs build, the old Max Packs build, where you go pile on your main, pile on gate out in the map. Ambulance donated three dollars and thirty-three cents last year for Christmas. I mailed soap penises with suction cups on the end to some friends. When I went to UPS, they made me declare what was in the packages, and I panicked and said it's just soap, don't worry, nothing weird, and I'm sure they took a look later. Okay. What? Okay. Very cheered. X300, every day I start my day by staring at the sun and screaming Solaris until my neighbors call the cops. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pause the donos. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and pause the donos, so uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll play them at the end. Okay, this is going to be, I think, another cheese build here from Hero. Uh, he sends out the very early probe, okay? Now, that could have been a proxy gate. Instead, he goes up and immediately starts harassing. And this also gives him a view on what's occurring. He adds a second gateway at home. He has double gas. Hmm. What are we looking at here? Double gate? I think... 
if you're gonna make two gates at home you want to get warp gate so i think what we'll see double gate there this probe will eventually exit make a pylon in a gateway and it'll be like a three gate that's my guess that's not really a build oh my god he killed an scv <laughs> oh kumio killed his own scv that's hilarious zero kills on there Okay, and Z, by the way, when they type Z, that's laughing in Korean. Like, you might type he, 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 or LOL. They type Zs, and that means laughing. Uh, anyways. Yeah. The <laughs> anyways, uh, Zealot going across the map. Warp Gate and two Stalkers. Uh, I mean, I think you have to send another probe out and make a proxy pawn, right? Nothing else makes much sense to me. Cyclone on the way. That's going to be helpful. Double adept. Dude, he's getting a little bit of everything. Now we need a century and a dark templar next. <laughs> really fill this out. So one zealot, two stalkers, soon to be two uh, adepts join them. A robo. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. You don't need a proxy then. You can just get a prism. And, well, against the old cyclone, uh, you know, prism is like a super hard counter to it. Against this one, I don't think it's quite as good, but still good. Oh, man. Going to town. That Zala did a great job tanking. Oh, he's going to lose the soccer. No! What? What? Okay, a mine on the way. This is pretty bad news right now for Gumi. I think Gumi might just die. Well, that mine actually does pretty darn well. And he's getting pretty low on health. Okay, okay. But as the prism comes, it's really hard to micro at that point. Like, the mines will get a hit unless you... Well, no, he could juggle. He could just pop it forward and juggle it into the prism. So, yeah, I mean, when you look at the, the micro potential that Hero has here, when the prism comes out, it's pretty rough. Dude, he is making double sentry. I was joking about that before, but okay. Hero, no, it's not a PvP. <laughs> I know, right? This looks exactly like a PvP type game. All right, warping in three stalkers, so he did get that third gateway. So he is going to have seven stalkers, two sentries right now. Again, Gumiho might just die. He needs an observer. That's the that's the real trick here. Oh my god. Those were actually pretty good mine hits. You gotta give him those. Alright, moves forward. A siege tank is on the way. Uh, you can cover these with a... Ooh. I feel like a force field would have been real good there. Okay, well. Actually, it ends up working out for him. He's killing a lot of SCVs right now. Gumio with the medevac out. Good juggling here from Hero. A siege tank is coming still. More SCVs joining the fray. Oh, God. Warping in even more stalkers right now. Some nice juggling back as well. A lot of these are very badly hurt. Oh, I don't know if Siege was the right move. Or maybe it was. Land that Viking. Dude, I think I'd rather land it for damage right now. But he is going after that Prism. Gets it some damage on it for sure. If you get the Prism, the rush is over. Oh, he gets it. Super sick. Vikings actually do pretty heavy damage. Very, very good damage against Armored for Vikings. Okay, 22 SCVs died. So it's eight workers against 25, but two command centers against just a single Nexus. So who's winning? Don't we have better tech here for Gumiho by a, a good margin? Medivacs plus siege tanks plus Marines reactored out, like three Marines at a time, right? So I would call it better tech. A lot of adepts being made. <laughs> Time to switch it up. The stalker sentry push didn't work. What about mass adepts without upgrades? Yeah, I think this is this is this is tough, but I think from here Gumio goes all in. Right? So if he can produce non-stop, he gets that second orbital, starts dropping. Oh god, that's a lot of adepts. Okay, I think actually he's just gonna die to this. 
this shade, he's going to see it. It's like, oh my god. You can't be happy about that. <laughs> oh my god. All right, that's going to be that. Hero is going to be able to take game number three and go up two to one in this series. A very weird way to go up two to one, I have to say. GG. That's crazy. Quality patch. <laughs> very weird game. <sighs> Why are Protoss like this? Yes. This is why we hate Protoss. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 2015 adepts were pretty hilarious. If he rebuilt the two supply depots, eh, I think he still loses there. He was just so fucked at that point. I'm oh, sorry, I'll play uh, Donos after this. I forgot to turn it back on. But the game is starting, but we'll play it right after this. Because I'm sure Hero would just all in again. <laughs> Gumio in the bottom left. In the top right, we have Hero. All right. Uh, Hero is on match point. So, I mean, I guess I guess anything could happen here. He might be able to close out. It's weird because, yeah, well, I mean, game two was a dumpster fire on both sides, honestly. Uh, and then game three, obviously, we just had, like, insanity going on very very heavy punishing there from hero some builds you would not normally think about so uh it is a gas first from gumiho so headed towards that factory and well let's wait and see if hero wants to do one base or two base how many bases does hero want that's a funny thing protoss gets to decide the amount of bases Yeah, kind of an interesting uh, concept, by the way, having a few gold patches at some of those bases instead of full gold bases. I like ideas like that. I like mixing it up, making it somewhere in between. So it looks like we are going to get an expansion here from Hero, but he is making the Zealot, which is kind of interesting. Didn't cancel it for a quicker Nexus. So definitely wants that unit. I wonder I wonder what that's all about, that Zealot. I'm actually kind of interested to see what he has what he has planned. It's really uncommon to make a Zealot like this. Like you make a Zealot against a proxy, uh Proxy Rex Reaper, it's very good. If you want to be aggressive, it can be good. Oh, actually, I've seen him do this before. My bad, my bad. Okay, so what this is, he's walking the Zealot around so it doesn't get caught by a Reaper. Uh, but then he makes an Adept, right? So he brings up the Zealot and Adept, and what it does is it slows down the Command Center a lot uh, because the Zealot just has a lot of health, and then the Adept can be microed heavily. 
It's actually a pretty cool move. He he's he's I've seen this multiple times, so my bad. Um but yeah, it, it, it's not that common anyways. Definitely not a, a super common opener, but someone like Hero with a great micro and uh knowledge of, of what he's trying to do here can do a good job with it. Now he actually missed a shot there on the adept. So a bit of a problem. Uh already the Zot taking a ton of damage. And it does go down. This one Hellion is doing serious work for Gumi. But the command center is slowed until that Cyclone comes out. I don't think he has any chance to uh, to push this back and get that, that command center fi uh, finished up. But already the Nexus is done here for Hero. So he is getting that production going. Damn, just barely got out of there. Gonna try to kill this off. Gets up, sees the Oracle being made. Man. Gumi just just roasting him right now. Nothing here was trying is really working out too much. Does kill off that Hellion. Let's see what he gets done with the uh the Oracle. Plenty of anti-air already here. Viking on the way as well. Yeah, decides to just tag and get out of there. Double Oracle being held. Third Oracle on the way. Triple Adept coming up. Does take three Adepts or three Oracle hits to uh, kill off uh, an SCV or a Marine. So that's why he waited for three and walked up. But that mine was really expertly placed and really ruined that idea. Kumio is one of the best mine placers in the game. He actually uh, was the king of running mines out to intercept oracles. Now the three oracles flying in. Let's see if they can find some damage. Or will they also run into a mine? All right. He tries to draw him over here. And then look at this. Flies in with this triple uh, oracle doing a great job. Oh, he's going to get by the mine. But almost doesn't care. Gets nine SCVs. Sacks is adept. Sacks one oracle. Hmm. Seems pretty good. Yeah, 44 workers to 27 with a third nexus on the way. As long as he can hold the next incoming push, he's pretty good to go, right? Now, Gumio does have a slightly better army. But you bring your oracles back. How many stalkers do you have? Five? How many gates does he have? Is it three gates right now? I believe it's three gates right now. Oh, the oracles come back for more harassment. Or maybe he stop units. Ah, he's diving on units. Okay, okay. So he's he might have to cancel this out. Oh, the shield battery finishing. He decides to just take the fight here. Well, he can still cancel it. Tries to pick off as many units as he can. Looks like the Oracles have been eliminated, but they killed three SCVs as well as some Marines there. Was that worth it? I think his main aim was to try to stop some reinforcements. And he's actually going across the map for a counterattack. This is kind of some weird play from Hero, I feel like. Let's see what those Stalkers can do, if anything. All right, going to set up a bunker, start sieging over here. Three Stalkers remain. They are reducing this unit count a little bit. A little bit of damage. Not looking super hot. Well, you know what? Ooh, I almost feel like it might be good to dive in there and get that SCV. The bunker could become the very difficult part to deal with there. He had double Phoenix, so if he stops the bunker and then lifts the tanks, maybe he picks off enough Marines that he's okay. Trying right now to heal up that uh, Twilight to try to get charged to finish. I don't know if that's going to work, though. All right, moves in, has those Phoenixes. Oh, my God. Lifting up the Siege tanks. <laughs> Hero right now getting some real damage done. Breaks the bunker. Phoenix is trying their best to actually kill the Siege tank by themselves. Repairs going down. Not going to be enough. Does end up losing a couple Phoenixes to kill those two Siege Shanks. And now the SCV count being reduced even further.
Well, the Twilight Council was taken out. A little drop behind. You can see that legs did not, in fact, finish. So slow zealots marching forward. Some real damage being dealt to Gumio back at home. Look at this. He might lose that command center. Oh my god, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. Army supply pretty similar. It's still a higher quality army other than the fact that he has Blink. And yeah, he has a few Phoenixes and stuff, but honestly, the, the army of Hero is not that great. But the fact that he kills that command center, he's killed so many workers as well. Gumiho is barely mining right now. Definitely looking good for our Protoss player. All right, flies in with those Phoenixes. Gumiho is going to GG. And that does it. Hero takes down the NA ESL Open Cup. That was that was a great tournament. That was one of the better Open Cups uh, that we've had. I think it's been at least two months since we've had a cup that, that was that good. A lot of legit, very good names. And yeah, Mapu typing in the chat. Big cheers to Mapu. You can use the command Mapu uh, to follow all of his stuff. And of course, click that link in there. Uh, we've started a YouTube channel of the casts. Uh, and you should follow it. I think it's a good idea. If you're in here watching, you like StarCraft 2 or you're very stubborn waiting for StarCraft 1. All right, guys, hope that you enjoyed that tournament. Uh, just as a little recap, we'll take a look at the bracket. So Hero beat Gumiho here. On his way, he beat Wayne as well and Maples and Vindicta. <laughs> not necessarily the toughest bracket, but good players in there. Wayne's, Wayne's pretty strong nowadays. Maples is not bad at all. Vindicta is a strong player. Uh, but not really having to go through uh, any other Korean players until the finals. Gumiho, a bit a bit trickier. Pig, Trigger, Clem. A bit trickier uh, run for him there. But was able to 2-0 Clem, who 2 0 Byun. So, pretty strong. Pretty strong. All right. And so, we're going to play a little bit of Brood War Ladder. I hope that you'll stay and watch. Brood War is fantastic. Uh, I'm sure we're having 500 people X off the window as quickly as they possibly can. Like, oh, I can't stand it. Someone once said that you fight the game, so I don't like it. Someone said that once. You're fighting the game. You shouldn't have to fight the game. It's not what's happening, guys. It's a fucking huge regret that anyone ever said that. It was an interesting way to try to describe what Brood War is, which is not accurate, that people have now used against Brood War. It's too bad. Whew. Why am I not logged in? What the fuck? What's going on here? Attempting to reconnect. What is this shit? Dude, why is Battle.net so bad? <laughs> Truly. <sighs> okay, let me X off the launcher. I'll restart the launcher. I think that did it last time. But it's just like uh, going like this. Oh, yeah. Don't answer the alert. Sorry. My bad. Sorry, chat. Lyrak is here. I need a big one today. Chat what? is kind of small. Very boys, cheered. X300. Swati and Holmes Mac. You guys can wank it in the corner if you want. Go ahead, chat. Wonke watching me and Lyric. Wonke in the corner, God. chat. Okay, Lyric. Go ahead. Do it. Wah! Wongi. 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 Ah. 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 Oh, ah, 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 ah.
<laughs> well, too bad it is so fucking cringe. You're gonna have to live with that. Guys, why are you so cringe, man? Chasing away Madman 998. Hey, muscles have grown wild for hundreds of centuries and have been farmed for almost 500 years in Europe. While pay mussels are native to Prince Edward Island, it wasn't until the late 1970s that they started to be farmed. Later, in 2022, Artosis moved to pay and all the mussels died. <laughs> what? I assure you they're still here. Although, they might go extinct if I let my daughters have as many as they want. Holy shit, do they love mussels. Guy in the chat donated three dollars. Canadians are too nice. My car broke down and a dozen people stopped to help. It was just a broken gulp pin and it was fixed within an hour. Nice. Okay. How about you try gulping on these nuts? Toxigen strikes again. You can't use my lack of knowledge about cars against me. Seriously. Fighting the game donated three dollars. Looks like you are fighting the game, Artosis. Battle net doesn't work. Haven't even got into a game and looks like you are fighting the game. Ha ha ha. Fucking Starcraft 1 is trash. Fucking your donos are trash too. Nobody wants to hear vampire moan. <laughs> yeah, they do. You want to make a fucking bet on that? Yeah, they fucking do want to hear the vampire moan. Don't you dare kink shame the guys in the chat. Get him again. Let's fucking farm him. Fuck this guy. He's like, re turn right 16. Oh, please talk to me. Please talk to me. No, I know. I told you. Instantly. I'm like, I'm going to play Brood War. They're like 500 people peace out immediately. Like, fuck this shit. Whoa. All these fucking checkers players. I'm like, I'm going to switch to chess. It's played on the same board. It's a bit older, but actually harder and more interesting. And they're like, fuck this shit. I'm a checkers fan. You don't want to have to fight against your own chess pieces. I'm like, that's not a good way to describe how the horse jumps. Dude, look at that fucking SCV. Are you fucking kidding me? Draw pack? Nice. No use. I don't get enough draw packs. That's for sure. I only get like three or four draw packs a week, man. Fuck. Yeah, I have considered, I have thought about like drop hacking a hacker. 
but I think probably the rules are so... First off, there's the fucking crazy guy that makes Reddit threads about me all the time that I don't want to deal with that. And then second off, some of the moderation shit going on on Twitch is so fucking crazy that they might be like, well, you used a hack, so now you're fucking banned. And it's like, dude, do you, do you see what the Brood War ladder is? Does this... Should I have to lose... How much do I lose every week to these people that do this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Chat. Lady D is with Lyrak right now. I'm 1K outside right now while I watch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Lyrak is so lucky. I wish I was huge. I'd take my Viagra, and I'm barely as big as Holmes, Mac. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Lady D Bounce. Yeah, oh yeah. Lyra, Lyrak is choking Lady D. Yeah, she likes it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Rerack. Did you say rerack? So this guy that just did this to me. This, I actually have been suspecting something for a bit and I'm checking right now. Okay, so hold on. Oh no, he drop packs everybody. So I think some people are using the counter draw pack to beat draw packers. Um, because I'm looking at like this guy's seawall profile, okay? So here, I'll show you. So it used to be if you were a draw packer, you'd go to the top of the ladder with like 70 and one or something, right? But look at this. So this is the guy's profile. Okay, so the ghost means that it was an instant leave. Okay, so like draw pack, draw pack, draw pack. Don't know what happened here where it was three minutes and 20 seconds. Draw pack, draw pack, draw pack, but he has losses in here, right? So I think the losses are people, I think people have gotten so sick of the draw packers. Cause I mean, we're even here talking about it. I've literally never downloaded a hack in my life, but the drop hackers have become, there's more of them now, right? So I think people are actually downloading draw packs and draw packing draw packers. So I think that's what's occurring here. So like this guy's trying to draw pack his way to the top and it's like 30% of the people he plays say fuck you and draw pack him back. Maybe maybe that's what maybe like K Launcher does that or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh yeah, that guy, that guy uh, will literally never even have friends. That's kind of sad. It reminds me donated three dollars. Imagine Artosis, your parents not loving It reminds me of StarCraft II when it first came out. Ratsteezer was stream sniping everyone, and Destiny figured out that if you spam someone with your chat, with invites and messages, they will lag out. Blizzard punished Destiny, not Deezer. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's how crazy the world is. That's how fucking crazy the world is. Can't even defend yourself from the fucking scum and villainy of the world. How fucked up is that? How crazy is that shit? Time to eat healthy donated $3.33. Chips, bacon, hamburger, slice of pizza, hot dog, pancakes, spaghetti, chips, bacon, hamburger, slice of pizza, hot dog, pancakes, 
brick, building construction, landmark, new moon, waxing crescent moon, quarter moon, waxing gibbous moon, full moon, waning gibbous moon, last quarter moon, waning crescent moon, crescent moon, new moon with face, quarter moon with face, last quarter moon with face. I noticed that you are fighting this, is dragon, this game by the way. again. Is that like when you play basketball, or any other sport, you are fighting your body since you get tired? Yeah. People say stupid shit, man. Yeah. No, it's it's a little bit frustrating that that is stuck around and people are like, yeah, that's why I don't like it. You still have to fight the game. All right, I'm gonna put one back on because I'm not he went Nexus first I'm not fucking playing this out hey Amy ready for our date what you're breaking up with me you found a new boyfriend who is it dr. Eggman what why He's fucking huge. I'm a tiny, small boy. I told you, when I get pregnant, my member gets small. Please, Amy, don't leave me. Oh, God, why are you kissing Eggman? Oh, God, why is he grabbing your butt? I'm crying, Amy. Please don't leave me. Wanka, wanky, 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 wanka, wanky, 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 wanky. This is like, I don't know if this will work because it's up a hill, so it's like really, really difficult to break.
I think that was slightly favored for me. But I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to look at the replay. I actually think I fucked it up a little bit. My targeting was not superb. Homer, Homer, donated three dollars, Artosis, how is this Homer? Rushing someone, Homer, attacking early, not macroing, I thought you wanted to get better, but you are early attacking, doesn't mean it wasn't a cheese build, you are why so dumb. don't you let him macro and let the best player win, scared, no Homer. Anonymous donated $3.33 when an SCV says three quarters for duty. Are they offering to buy your duty for three quarters, aka 75 cents, or are they offering to sell you their own duty for three quarters, aka 75 cents? I'm confused about whose duty is being auctioned for three quarters. Jim Sag donated three dollars, so chat. My GF broke up with me today. Sag. She called me on the phone and must have just exercised cause she was out of breath. Sag. She also invited a friend or two. Because they clapped in the background as she dumped me. Sag. 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 What do you want? Uh, 
Anyone seen Dirty Decker tonight? I heard that motherfucker was fixing to get laid tonight. He was taking some hot young 65-year-old to the movies. If we don't hear from him, we may need to do a welfare check. Not sure his old heart can take it. I suppose there are worse ways to go. Ain't that right, Erotus? No wonder Artosis donated three dollars, still attacking? Still no third base? Still no macro game, huh? You saw it was a pro player like Dragon and you figure, let's send this early, huh? Why are you scared to play a macro game against good players Artosis? God, you're How so you dumb, man. It's so annoying. Two? 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 We're done. <clears throat> Stupid fucking game. Stupid fucking map. <sighs> we'll be back tomorrow. It was pretty fun between the drop hack and that bullshit. Wow, someone I haven't seen streaming in a very long time. Sort of is on. Really like Sort of. Uh, he was a great macro zerg way back in the day uh, from Europe. Very, very strong player, uh, but kind of disappeared. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and send you guys to him. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Later.